What up, what up? This is David from the Five Six Kings. And guys, I got a bone to pick. I got a bone to pick with, surprise, surprise, it's with Subway. Because they have a new commercial out. Where Simone Biles is like, she like does like her, she might not, but she probably like does a bunch of backflips in because you're like, how fucking good she is at that. And you're like, wow, that's fucking amazing. And she does backflips in. She's like, we're refreshing everything here at Subway. Even the Italians. And then Jimmy Garoppolo goes, whoa, mamma mia, we talking Italians? Well, allow me to take it from here, Simone. He's like, this is just like my Nana used to make. And she's like, I don't cook. He's like, you don't cook? And he's like, Italians, you get the capicola, you get the fucking ham, the salami, the mozzarella. Like, like over the top. And you're like, who the fuck cares, Jimmy Garoppolo? Guys, like, obviously Jimmy Garoppolo is more famous than the Five Six Kings. But in a very real sense, he's not more famous than the Five Six Kings. And I know that doesn't make sense what I just said, but hear me out. Like, who cares who Jimmy Garoppolo is? Jimmy Garoppolo is the quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. I guarantee you there's some people who are watching this right now who are like, or listening to this. They're like, oh, I didn't know that. Guarantee you. Guarantee you. And like... He's the quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers and will likely be traded to another team by the draft because they drafted Trey Lance last year with the third overall pick via trade-up with the Miami Dolphins. Great move by the Dolphins. And Trey Lance is going to be their starting quarterback. So Jimmy Garoppolo is a quarterback who's going to play somewhere this year. And I'm sure he cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars if not millions of dollars, to come do this commercial. Subway, Five Six Kings would do it for free, baby. Put us on there. You want to talk Italian? I can't stop Braden from doing an Italian accent. Every episode, he's like, Hey, come on, huh? You fucking wise guy or something? What do you get out of here? Every episode. Every fucking episode, this guy's doing an Italian. It doesn't apply 90% of the time. But he, he can't stop doing it. Just get him on there. He's like, oh, Simone. Hey, Garo, you talking Italians? Let me take over. And she's like, who the fuck is this guy? And be like, who the fuck am I? Hey, come on, huh? We're talking Italians over here. I'm Braden Bullard. So but you could have all of that for a fraction of what you're giving Jimmy Garoppolo. So you're fucking up. Jimmy Garoppolo is not selling you guys more. Get someone who like, is, is famous Italian. Get one of the guys from The Sopranos. And people will be like, oh, go get that fucking Sopranos sub. Guarantee you. Guarantee you. You could pay fucking pussy. Uh, what was his Big pussy from The Sopranos. You could pay him to do this commercial. And people will be like, holy shit, that's big pussy. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. I'm going to go get the get the big pussy sandwich at, at fucking Subway. So you're fucking up. You're fucking up, and I hate to see it because, don't forget, you guys are good enough for Tony Hawk. You're better than Jimmy Garoppolo. You're good enough for everybody who's listening to the Five Six Kings. Subway, please, quit fucking up and give us money. Enjoy this week's episode, guys. That's the Paul Beach County Anthem. All my Paul Beach County niggas, y'all put the fucking guns in there and fuck them sis. Bitch, I'm from Paul Beach County. This is where I'm from. Where niggas get gunned down and left slumped. Who got them just for fucking round? This ain't a county for you bitches to come around. What up? What up? And welcome to another episode of the unofficial podcast of the National Football League, the world-famous and critically acclaimed 5-6 Kings podcast. I'm David Breen. With me, as always, my dear friend and co-host, Brayden Bullard. Brayden, how are you, man? I'm I'm doing good, David. Easter was yesterday. The bunnies were hopping. Found a bunch of eggs. Easter was yesterday. The bunnies were hopping? Easter was yesterday... Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was resurrected from the dead. He is risen. He has risen. Amen. But yeah, I'm doing good, man. 
How are you doing? I'm doing well. Nice. I'm doing well. I celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior yesterday. Yeah. It was very nice. Nice. Yeah. See any bunnies? It was very nice. No. No? No. I, I celebrate real Easter. All right. What's that? Not some fucking Jew who's like, oh, we got a bunny and eggs. No, I'm a, I'm a God fearing <laughs> Christian. And I celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. God fearing. God fearing. Absolutely, <laughs> got to. You got to fear the man. You, you ever read the book of Job? No. Oh, that poor guy's like, I love God. I worship Him, and then God was like, Is the, this the guy? The that- devil's devil's like, Hey, God. You're not like you give Job all these nice things, and that's why he loves you so much. And God's like, "All right, oh, you want I'll, to put him to the I'll test, kill his family, yeah, I see. Yeah, and yeah. give him disease, yeah. and take away." Like, yeah. he's like, "Oh, look, you see that? He's still praying to me." Yeah, that little bitch is still <laughs> praying to me. That poor man. God, that dude. poor I man. I actually do remember that story. Yeah, now it's that you fucked up. Yeah, how can you forget that story? It's You're like. Up. <laughs> You're being taught that story at the age of like seven. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm God fearing. God fearing. God fearing. That's what the five six things <laughs> are all about. But yeah, man, you're no. doing good. Good. It was a good week. I went uh, with a buddy of mine. I went and saw the movie Ambulance with Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the Easter Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> went and sat on the bunny's lap. <laughs> no, yeah, that movie was. Yeah, no, Brain Bray and I went and saw it. It was, it was a fun ride. It was, it was a wild movie. Yeah. You. If you yeah. guys are gonna go see a movie in theaters right now, I, why not? Yeah, Jake why not? Jake Hall is just he's fantastic. Here's here's an issue I had with the movie theater though. Oof. Um, so I, I'm not gonna. I, I snuck snacks in for sure. <laughs> I brought a I brought a protein bar. I got a Jack Link's beef jerky beef stick that had cheese in like like side by side, and I got marshmallow Reese's. The marshmallow Reese's weren't great. I wouldn't. I'd go regular Reese's if I'm buying Reese's. Yeah. Same and I was like, well, there's no way I can get a drink in. <laughs> so I'll buy an $8 soda. Well, I'm not, it was, it was eight oh one. It was, it was what the total was for the fucking soda I got. Dude, it's highway robbery over there. Yeah, and I got that. Meanwhile, Braden walks in, <laughs> makes a point. I got his ticket. I bought the tickets because I got there first. <laughs> He made a point of stopping and speaking to the woman at the counter when you first walk in, like chatting it up with her. Brayden is is walking in holding. He didn't put him in his pocket. He had snacks in his hands. He had a tumbler full of water, like one of one of these fucking things. This is it right here. It was that, yeah, yeah. that, and a bottle of like cold pressed juice that he bought somewhere else. Walks in holding it, like, puts it on the counter to talk to the lady at the front. They didn't say a fucking word. <laughs> Dude. This kid brought in, like, $12 worth of shit. And they just stared at it. They noticed he did it. He also didn't buy a ticket from them. And just walks in carrying it. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Bro, I swear to God, I this woman <laughs> I was speaking to her looked at me. Looked down, saw everything in my hands, looked back at me, and then you were like, oh, Brady, I got the ticket. I was like, oh, yeah, but he's got the ticket. And I swear to God, I saw, like, the – she was so just – like, the life just sucked out of her eyes. Like, as if she just did not give a fuck. Like, everything was just not important. She saw and she was like, all right. Yeah. yeah. Like, whatever. Just, the, the what am I going to do? this kid had – like it was a whole f- like there's a Whole Foods right next to the movie theater. That's why he went. had he had just bought it. Yeah, <laughs> he had just bought it and was like in the face. I just bought that from the store right outside. Uh, and know, she was just... like, "Yeah, well, she wouldn't do that, but <laughs> yeah, she en- was... enjoy the movie." I'll just act like I didn't see it. Yeah, thank you for almost getting me in trouble. Sorry, lady, if you're watching this, my apologies. I hope she got fired, and it's your fault. I, I hope she's watching this and is like, oh, that's the motherfucker. Oh, that's the kid. That's the motherfucker. And then she just brings our podcast down. Ugh. She yeah, brings it down. Good. We never get that Subway money because of her. Oof. Because of you. All right, David. Now I yeah. get it, all right? Yeah. You should. But all in all, good week. Yeah. yeah good week. Good. Ambulance. Good movie. Go watch it. Jake Hall snapped. Hey, did. Uh, right. Yesterday, I want to talk. I don't want to talk long about the Miami Heat. Long, but the- long story short. I mean, the Miami Heat game one of the playoffs against the Hawks dominated. They're the one seed, and nobody is putting respect on their name. And long story short. Everyone is like, 
You're, you're forcing it. You're forcing that one. <laughs> South, South, South Park. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you're forcing that South Park reference. <laughs> um, the Heat, like, they're the one seed. They had the best record in the Eastern Conference. And everyone's like, oh, it's the Celtics. It's the Sixers. It's the Nets. Fucking Mike Greenberg on Get Up on ESPN was talking about the, the fucking Brooklyn Nets were playing in a play-in game against the Cavs. And if they won that game, they'd be the seven seed. Okay. And get to get to play against the Celtics, who are the two seed. If they lost that game, they'd have to play another game. If they win that game, they'd be the eight seed playing against the Heat. If they lose, they don't make the playoffs. Mike Greenberg was legitimately saying, he's like, if I'm the Brooklyn Nets, I lose this game intentionally so I can then get the Heat in the first round. Oof. Like, fuck you, Mike Greenberg. Yeah. Fuck you. The Heat, the Miami Heat top to bottom best roster in the NBA. I feel very confident saying that, especially after the first playoff game, because Duncan Robinson, who was moved out of the starting lineup, and he's also, he's not even the number one option off the bench. He's number two option off the bench. He had 27 points. P.J. Tucker had like 16 points. They dominated the Atlanta Hawks. They they won by 20 something points. Sheesh. Dominated it with Kyle Lowry having a relatively pedestrian offensive game. Bam having a relatively pedestrian game all around. Like like stars on the team played okay. Yeah, and they still And snapped. they dominated yeah. the game. Heat up. Yeah. They they run the risk Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, if they play them, like they can go crazy. Yeah. Joel Embiid can go crazy. Giannis can go crazy. Top to bottom, best roster in the NBA, hmm. the Miami Heat. Well, there you go. That's yeah. David's first take. I, I, I think, yeah, they could, they could obviously lose to Milwaukee because Giannis is an MVP. But I, I, I think they should win the East, and then, depending on who makes it out of the West, we'll see. You think they're going all the way? They can. They definitely can. The Suns are very good. Mm. The Suns, I honestly think any other team in the playoffs, the Heat win a seven-game series. The Suns, maybe not. Okay. So we'll see. Yeah. But white hot, let's go Heat. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. For all you Heat fans out there. We'll see. Best team in basketball right now. Yeah. Uh, let's... I mean, we 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 done pussyfooting around. Do you wanna do you wanna talk about this movie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was thinking you know, I was pull like, pull up some shit, guys. So like, I picked this movie based off of one scene that is the most ridiculous scene I've ever seen in any movie, and I don't know why, <laughs> but I was genuinely surprised at how weird the rest of this movie was. <laughs> I don't know why Based off the scene that I And Braden correctly guessed it by the way So we'll get there He texted me He said Obviously <laughs> Obviously It was this And he was spot yeah. on Yeah But the rest of the movie was so fucking weird It's like every other line You're like kind of You're, you're kind of blown back You're, you're, like, like, you're wow, just like what, what the fuck is going on Dude It is so weird It's I don't Whoever wrote this man You got a <clears throat> Got a shitty childhood or something. Man. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, like absolutely. Brayden's, whatever world you Brayden's grew up trust in. Trust issues. Don't scratch the surface on whatever's going on with this fucking writer at all. Bananas. So we gonna talk money? Yeah. This budget could not have been more than five million dollars. I don't know what they paid Matthew McConaughey, but there's no way they paid him his quote, his rate. It's higher. It's higher than five million. The budget. Yeah. I don't believe you. That's what it says here on IMDb. I'm not. I'm not the. How much higher than five million? Not cr- not too much higher. Like double. Yeah. What was the budget? Eleven million. That's ridiculous. Eleven million dollars. Ridiculous. How how much <laughs> did they pay Matthew McConaughey? Is the question. That's probably where the like, that, big chunk that is of that the went. only. Like, there's no way. Like, so it's Matthew McConaughey. It's Emil, 2012. Emil Hirsch is in it, but I can't imagine like they were paying them both the same. Like, like there's no way they both made five million dollars, and then it was yeah, 
Yeah. Like, you know, I bet you between the two of them, they probably made $10 million. You think? Between those two, the fuck else would this money have gone to? No, you're right. Like, I mean, f- <sighs> most of the movie takes place in a fucking trailer. Yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> like, it, like, literally in a trailer. Like, 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 like the, the budget was not big other than, oh, we have Matthew McConaughey in it. Yeah. And it's not like, like the way they filmed it was, it was all good, but you wouldn't be like, oh, this is like outstanding cinematography or something. No. no yeah. So, so, so it was an $11 million budget. Eleven million. No way they made money. <laughs> no, this. they they had to have lost money. I'm gonna guess they grossed five million dollars. Very close. It was uh, four point six. Yeah. worldwide. Yeah, their that opening is... weekend in U.S. and Canada was thirty seven thousand yeah. dollars. because it was a fucking it was NC seventeen. Yeah, which and, and, and so so fact, like that that's a bigger like you have to be seventeen or older to go see it. There's no like rated R movies. I could bring my nephew to a rated R movie if I want to be like a weird, shitty, creepy uncle. I could be like, yeah, you want to go see that rated R movie? I couldn't bring him to an NC-17 movie. They'd be yeah. like, he's, he's got to be 17, which is a weird age to pick. Yeah. 17. So he kind of – I think he wanted it um, possibly rated R, but when they came to NC-17, um, he wasn't willing to change anything in the movie <laughs> – because he thought he would, it would take away from the filthiness. So he is the director. Director, yeah. Not McConaughey. Not, not yeah. McConaughey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. William, William Friedrich yeah, or whatever it's a, his name yeah, is. It's a Friedrich? Weird last, it's a weird last name like that, Wait, yeah. Pull it up. It's got to be somewhere on there. You're on the Fried, page. Fri- no, but like, I don't know how to say Friedkin. Fr- Fried, F- Friedkin. Friedkin. Friedkin, Friedkin. William Friedkin. Yeah. That guy. Uh, <laughs> he's fucking weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> weirdo. And I, I like the fact that he's like, I won't. I won't budge. No, no, that's... They, I won't budge. They're like, why didn't you, you know, try to change, you know, some things so you can help market this movie better than to an NC-17 kind of... He's like, this is art. Yeah. This, art. This is my art. I, yeah. I want it filthy. Yeah. Filthy. Which it uh, fucking was. Oh, my God, it was. Like, oh, my fucking <laughs> God, it was, guys. Yeah. Let's, uh... What are, they, what are they saying about this movie online? What do the reviews say it? So I am... Dude, not bad. IMDb gave it a 6.7 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes gave it an 80%. Voodoo. Stop. Rotten Tomatoes? Give it an 80%? That's what I'm saying, dog. Like, what did Voodoo give it? What, what's, what's Voodoo, Voodoo? gave it a 3.2 out of 5. And then That's Google so users cool. give it a... Yeah, it's, and then Google users gave it a 72%. What did you give it? <laughs> I give it like a like a five point six. Sure, I give it a four and a half. It's not a good movie. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, it's, like... it's fucking out there. It's cr- so like I enjoyed watching it. I yeah, I, like, I will say that. Like I was, it is not a good movie. There I... is there is nobody in my life that I would recommend watch this movie. Yeah. I don't even want to say I was pleasantly surprised. I was, like, very weirdly surprised. But here's the thing. If someone says, hey, David, should I watch this or The Lost World Jurassic Park, I'm going to say watch Killer Joe. Yeah, you're going to get— Ten times out of ten. Yeah, because you you know— And nine times out of ten. Nine times. If a— if a child asks me, if you feel I'll like say, you yeah, get, watch the Lost World, like you want to get your memorabilia on, you know? Yeah. 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 Memorabilia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just feeling in that memorabilia, yeah. you know, you, gotta, feel. you just got to feel memorabilia. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Gotta gotta memorize it. Yeah. Dude, so God. it's crazy because they were nominated for a bunch and they won a bunch of awards. But any, like, good awards? I mean, yeah, some. I You know. Like they, what? Like Golden Golden Globes? So they won the Saturn Award for Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Horror Films for Best Independent Film, Best... A- I mean, th- this year for them was, like, off the charts for this fucking award show. So Best Actor, Matthew McConaughey, Best Independent Film, Best Supporting Actress, Gina Gershon, um, Best Director, William Friedkin, uh, th- and then Best Writing, Tracy Letts. They were nominated, but... How was um, he nominated for Best Director? Right, bro? This move got, like... This is a movie that I would jokingly be like, oh, this is the best movie I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Like, the fact that award shows are like, oh, he did a great job. Yeah. He shot the fuck out of this movie. It was perfect. Like, it was fucking ridiculous. Yeah. It was ridiculous. So they won um, the Special Honorary Award at the Austin Film Critics Association for Matthew McConaughey. Um, he also won Actor of the Year. <laughs> 
at Central Ohio Film Critics Association, Matthew McConaughey. Cause like, uh, but so does it say what else? So it's just the actor yeah, of the year. Yeah, but keep doing that. I'm going to see what other movies he did in 2012. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, they won uh, the uh, award for Best Overlooked Film, <laughs> which is weird. Uh, I mean, I guess it was a little overlooked, but like Best Overlooked Film. That's kind of like a stretch, I feel. Um, nominated for a bunch of others. I mean, dude, it's pretty wild how many nominees they got. Nominations, I mean. But they won the uh, Toronto Film Critics Association uh, Best Supporting Actress Award for Gina Gershon, which she she kind of deserved that award, I would say. That's, Sh- that's Charlotte, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, she she did pretty good. I mean, she didn't have that much, but, like, the times where she needed to be good, she did. She was pretty good. Uh, so they won the Golden Mouse Award at the Venice Film Festival. William Freakin. Good for him, man. The Golden Mouse Award. Yeah, these these awards kind of suck. So it's weird. I've been told that this was a 2012 movie. Yeah. IMDb, it's credited for 2011. I'm just going to go through what he was Maybe in. Maybe it was like right on the... Between those years. So in 2011, he was in The Lincoln Lawyer. Which is a good movie. Yeah. Bernie, which I'm not familiar with. No. Killer Joe was credited for that. 2012. Uh, he was in a Eastbound and Down. The Paper Boy, I'm not familiar. Mud, which isn't as good as Mud 2, Never Clean. I don't know if you've seen that one. There's nope. mud all over the library. They got to clean up. And they're like, we thought last time was bad. And they're like, there's mud everywhere. We got to clean this up. God, that sounds muddy. Yeah. And Magic Mike. Nice. No, neither of those years would I say actor of the year. No. At all. Because uh, this wasn't a good movie. No, no. But, this, but, but he did, I would say, pretty good acting. Like for sure. Well, then let me say that. So he soaked up these lines. Like these lines were insane, it's, and and like the emphasis he had on them, and the way he kind of like drew them out. Sh- I felt like he did good. Sure, his acting was fine, but just the writing and no, so what weird. was going on was so fucking out there to where yeah. I couldn't even rec- Like I couldn't like sit there and be like, oh man, he's a great actor. I was just like, oh man, this is so fucking weird. Exactly. Like it was tough. It's not, and it wasn't weird in the sense like. Like, they do weird shit in The Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. But you're like, oh, Jonah Hill's character's weird, but oh my god, is he amazing at this. Yeah, they don't really give any backstory as to why the characters, for the most part, are the way that they are. They're, they're just fucking, like, hicks and weird. Yeah. Weird so, hicks. To the best award that this movie got, uh, at the Women Film Critics Circle Awards, they won um, Worst Female Images in a Movie. And worst male images in a movie. Worst male images, I guess, for the female film critics. Or, Maybe, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So it's yeah, toxic masculinity yeah. At, at its fucking finest in this movie. Oh yeah, and, absolutely. And yeah, you know, what? spot on for both of those. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think they nailed those awards. Yeah, for sure. God, dude, <laughs> this All movie right. is. It's fucking out there. It's, it's out be... there, guys. You're, you're going to hear. Go watch this movie, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Go fucking watch it. Because, <laughs> like, we'll say this. Like, I'm going to break down the scenes. I'm going to say stuff that happened in the movie. And you're going to be like, this isn't real. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be like, what, what the, the fuck, fuck are they talking about? This is bullshit. I feel like it's hard to even say right now, like, what to say. Because you're like, there's so much to process. There's so much to think about. And there were times when I was doing this where I was, like, trying to do my thing where I say a fake thing that happened in the movie. And you're like, oh, my God. But what they did was way weirder than I would have wrote. Yeah. So I was like, all right, no. I'm just going to roll with what actually (laughs) happened. Because it's a fucking ridiculous movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. So, guys, get we're going to take a quick break. We're going to catch our breaths, compose ourselves, and... (sighs) When we come back, we're going to be talking all things Killer Joe. So stick around. And we're back. We're back. Move around. Brayden and I just, uh, I spent like five minutes trying to figure out the way I want to do this and have my notes. And I just wake. Oh. Now you. Oh, God damn it, David. I mean. This probably isn't going to work. But does it feel right? But, like, we're going to roll with it for now. Yeah. For now. I will probably switch. We want to be comfortable so that you're comfortable. You know? No, I don't care about their comfort. At all? No, this is only about mine. 
Yeah. Not this, even mine. This has none. No, not yours. Especially not yours. All right. You kidding me? What are the... I, you know what I think about your comfort. I got real weird with you earlier. <laughs> <laughs> we'll touch on that later. I guess we will. All right. So the movie movie starts. <laughs> there's uh there's like a lighter flicking is what we there is like ten minutes. Uh it's not ten minutes, but it's long. Yeah, where it's, it's a like, weird long it's like universal pick, but it's not universal. It's like Paramount Pictures yeah. and it's like drawn this out this production company and the, like it's it is so much of that where you're just like all right that is the most so I say drawn ten out minutes thing. so it was probably like two and a half minutes. There's sure, nothing sure. that feels more drawn out than that in this movie. Uh sure there is. You think? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. We'll get to it. So there's a there's a lighter flicking we hear and then we hear like a gun cock and then there's thunder and it's dark out. And then it starts pouring rain, and we see a cat run across the street, and there's a pit bull chained up, barking its fucking head off. And it is chained – this entire movie – they're in a trailer park. This entire movie, the pit bull is just chained up out there. So fun It's fact. pouring rain. It's not pouring rain. It's hot out. It's cold out. Yeah, it's Dog's pretty – just out there chained up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's a good point. That yeah. weather changed like a million times yeah, on this but, dog, but, and it was always there. Always. Fun fact, that dog is apparently from the movie Alpha Dog. It was Adolf? Bro. Yeah, apparently. Get the fuck out of here. I swear to God, that's what I read. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I swear to God. Is that Emil Hirsch's real dog? That's now I, it is didn't the question. Say. It didn't say, but I was thinking Emil Hirsch has trained this dog specifically to just bark. Dude, that, that makes me so happy. Right? It's that, probably, is, that is my favorite fun fact we have had on this show. That dog is... Bar none. More successful than me. <laughs> that has got a better resume. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, it's been on. It's been on screen with Justin Timberlake, <laughs> Bruce Willis, Bro. Matthew McConaughey, Emil Hirsch. Yeah, and I'm getting more. Dude, that, I'm getting more jealous. That dog. You've you been speak. on screen with David Breen. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> uh, good for that dog. Yeah, good for the, it's barking its fucking brains out. Johnny True Love runs up to the trailer, and he. That's Emil Hirsch. For those of you who don't know, I'm only referring to him as Johnny True Love. Yeah. Uh, he's banging on the trailer door, and he's screaming. He's like, Dottie, come open the fucking door. I know you're in there. Come on. Dottie, open the door. He's banging. It's raining. The dog's barking. He goes, T-Bone, shut the fuck up. <laughs> he's like, come on. And then all of a sudden, the lady answers the door. Full bush. Dude. Full, first thing you see, just like open the door. You just see her bush. <laughs> and let, and let's, like, Whoa. let's set this up, too. She's like up in the trailer, so... Eye line, his eye line is direct with the bush. Like, it, it's pretty appalling the angle they got it at too, because like they're pretty close on set, just right there. Yeah, and he's like, hey, <laughs> and he goes in and he's like, what are you doing? Like answering the door with your fucking pants down? She's like, I didn't know it was you. As if that was like the like anyone else, <laughs> it's fine, but because it's him, it's weird. She's like, I didn't know it was you. There's so many lines in this movie, yeah. and it started with that, where I'm like, how, how does that make sense? He, he pees with the door open, and she's like, close the fucking door. And he's like, you're fucking naked. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then he goes, gets himself a beer out of the fridge, and like starts going through their shit. What, and you're like, what is the dynamic of their relationship? Yeah. What is going on? Right like, we don't know who she is. Yeah. And he's like, hey, is dad or Dottie home? And she's like, yeah. She's like, why the fuck are you here? She's like, did Adel throw you out again? And he's like, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. And she's like, did you fucking... She's like, you fucking hit her? You hit her again. No, she's like, didn't, she didn't ask. She's like, you fucking hit her again, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, I didn't fucking hit her. And he's like, you mind going and putting some clothes on? Your bush is fucking distracting to me. You got your bush. I don't like it up there. I don't like it up there. Nah, we're going yeah, yeah, to yeah. move around. Yeah. He's like, your bush is fucking distracting. And she, like, rolls her eyes and then walks away. Um... Johnny True Love is then, and he's rolling a joint out of weed in, like, a little tin box. And his father comes around the corner. And I, I he, the guy, I don't know the actor, he kind of looks like the actor who plays Danny Rayburn in the show Bloodline. Um, the guy's also in Ready Player One. He's the bad yeah. guy. He's in some, uh, some, some of the new Star Wars movies. He looks like him, but jacked. Yeah. So think Jack Danny Rayburn. He's been in a guy. couple of things. I, I can't remember. But he ain't you, been. He ain't been in shit. All right. He's Jack Danny Rayburn. That's all he'll ever be. There you go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's like 
he's going through a tin and he's rolling the joint. Johnny True Love is, and Jack Danny Rayburn's like, "Yeah, man, help yourself," and like, like annoyed. Yeah, and he starts like talking shit about the bud. He's, he's he's shitting on the quality. He's like, "Where the fuck you get this, anyways?" And he goes, I "Bought it from you." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, "This is that shit." Yeah. He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Ah, oh, man." It's just there's so many things that make you question, like, how the fuck didn't he know that? Yeah. I he, I mean, the fucking it's his. Yeah. He bought it from him. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what? So that's his dad. The chick is his stepmom. We find out. Yeah. Which it's, just, it's, dad, it's dad's new wife. That's step-mom. how so many pornos started. Absolutely. Stepson opens the door to a fucking trailer. and it's, Stepmom's like, oh, I didn't know oh, it was you. Here's my bush. Well, well come on in, sweetie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, Unfortunately. You, oh, you hit her? Well, here I found yeah. Unfortunately, he doesn't fuck the stepmom, and it never really ever feels like he's going to. Yeah. They should have uh, They should have sowed those seeds, too. There's so many things that there's no real reason as to why it's happening, I feel like. They should have fucked. Yeah. And uh, Justin, Justin Timberlake, I was about to say, because I put JT down. Uh-huh. I, I bet you I make that mistake a few times. Yep. Johnny True Love is like, I need a place to stay. And Jack Danny Rayburn's like, why did, why did Dell throw you out? Did you fucking hit her again? And he's like, no, I didn't fucking hit her. And he's like all defensive. And then he's like. It's very weird how calm everyone is about him possibly hitting this girl. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> turns out it's his mom is Adele. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, like, but like, <laughs> like they're so calm about him hitting her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Sharla is the is the stepmom's name. She goes, it's not like you haven't hit her before. And he's like, man, shut the fuck up. Like he's like talking shit. And he's like, man, you open the door with your beaver just all puckered up right in my face. Like it was trying to sh- <laughs> like it was going to reach out and shake my hand or something. He's like, I don't need to hear this shit from you. And the dad goes, oh, she smacks. She smacks Johnny True Love in the face. And the dad goes, she didn't know it was you with the door, man. Dude. <laughs> so, like, like that makes sense to him as well. And he says, it's not the point. I don't want Dottie having to look at her own stepmother's pussy all day. <laughs> it's, it's wild. You're like, you're, you're, this is like five minutes into the yeah. film, and you're like, what the fuck's going on? Johnny True Love, she, she's then like, I'm going to bed. Johnny True Love just says goodnight. Yeah, she, he, or goodbye, I think he said. No, he says goodnight. Oh, okay. I've rewound it. He says goodnight, and <laughs> she turns around... And charges at him and starts fucking like fist fighting him. Yeah. And then he just said gives- such worse things. Good night. And yeah. she's like, ah, oh, that's it. That's you cross. The that's fucking the line. line. Yeah. Goes and like he's like fucking hitting her. And then like while she's doing this, he's going sweet dreams. <laughs> Don't let the bed bugs bite. Like he's fucking like defended himself doing that. Charlotte says he could stay the night and then that's it. And he goes, I'll stay here as long as I fucking want to, bro. <laughs> bro. I ain't fucking leaving. <laughs> Dude. Emil Hirsch too soaked this part up. Like, good yeah. for him. We uh she's like walking away and he throws a pillow at her head and like it hits her and she's like Mother-, and then just still goes to the bedroom. We we now see Dottie. Dottie is uh she's like a teenage girl. She's young. D- didn't the father wasn't the father like Oh, you shouldn't have pissed her off. So so he says, what the fuck, man? Now I'm in the dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but we see Dottie. She's like awake in bed looking scared. Yeah. Uh, as a child would be. And jo- uh, Dude, this movie gets Johnny so True Love goes, put, put some pants on. We got to talk. He's like, I need pants on for that. He's like, we got to go somewhere. He's like, just whisper. He's, he's like, it's private stuff. He's like, then fucking whisper. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. And then Johnny True Love... Uh, yeah, but like, puts him in a headlock, and he's like, "Put some pants on, we're leaving." Yeah, and they start like tussling. They like fucking go to outside the trailer, and they're like, "Get the fuck off me!" This and that, and then they like snap back in, and they're like in the same position. But but like he just puts him in a headlock. No, yeah. And then they then he like goes and puts pants on and leaves with him. Bro, this is his father. Like you think and your father would his beat father, the fuck out of you? It's his father, and he's like sixty pounds heavier. Yeah, no, no, he's, he's, a he's much bigger I him, guy. I call him Jack Danny Rayburn because he's big. Yeah, much bigger he's than a Emil big Hirsch. dude. And he just lets that happen. Yeah, they they're outside, and Johnny True Love says, "I need six thousand dollars, or some guys are gonna kill me." And he's like, "Well, then you better fucking get out of town." And Johnny True Love's like. If you can give me a thousand, I can hold him off. He's like, I don't have a thousand dollars. 
And then they, they like, get in a truck and they leave. Cut to them at a strip club. Johnny True Love, they're sitting there drinking. And Johnny True Love's like, man, it's fucking mom's fault because she threw me out. He's like, I didn't hit her. And then uh, fucking Jack Danny Reverend's like, well, what happened? He's like, I, you know, I, I threw her up against the fridge. <laughs> I threw her up against the fridge. He's like, but she stole two ounces of Coke from me. And Jack Danny Reverend's like, no, she didn't, man. She's never fucking done Coke. She didn't steal it. She's like, I'm telling you, man, she took it and she sold it. Because she pulled tonight, she earlier tonight, she pulled up and that Cadillac was running like it was brand new. And she's the only one that knew yeah. where it was. Yeah, and he goes, yeah. and then Jack Danny Irvin goes, the gold Cadillac? He's like, that fucking thing hasn't been running in years. Uh, he's like, he's like oh, where do you uh, think she got the money? And yeah. he's like, all right, she probably, stole, <laughs> yeah, she probably stole your Coke and sold it and got the car fixed. <laughs> yeah, so I confronted her on it and then she threw me out. It's just, just fucking crazy. And then didn't the father say... Um, before they even got to the strip club, he's like, man, I never had $1,000 ever. That's what he says for right now. Okay. He says, <laughs> I've never had $1,000 in my entire life. That's tough. And then That's Johnny tough, True Love yeah. says, well, how do you like to? In fact, how'd you like to have $15,000? He's like, and holy he's, shit. And he's like, ah, here we go. And like he starts walking away. He's like, this is going to be, he's like, this is the, what a, remember, remember the farm? And Johnny Truman goes, what about the farm? Don't bring up the fucking farm, all right? <laughs> like, it's like, don't bring up the fucking farm. This isn't the farm. This is going to be way easier. You ever heard of a guy named Joe Cooper? He's a detective. And he kills people for money. Now, mom's got a $50,000 life insurance out on her. And uh, Dottie. Oh, so so dad's like, well, who's the... who's the, he, he says it wrong. He says it way wrong. Yeah, like not even close. Like, like, like fucking Braden saying memorabilia. He's like, who's the memorabilia on it? And he and then Emil Hirsch looks at him and goes, beneficiary. <laughs> he's like, Dottie's the beneficiary, which is the daughter who lives in the trailer there. Yeah, he's like, what does that mean? Yeah, he's like, what's that mean? He's like, he's like, he's like Dottie gets the money if mom fucking dies. He's like, um. And oh. and Jack Danny oh Jack Danny Rimmer can't believe that his ex wife didn't leave any of the money for him. <laughs> he's like, I can't fucking believe it. She didn't leave me anything. Yeah. And he's like, Why the fuck would she? He hasn't been divorced for like ten years. <laughs> he's like so distraught at first, just thinking about that. Um, so we find out they start calling Joe Cooper Killer Joe. And they say he charges twenty thousand. And then he's Jack like, How do you know this? Yeah. He's like, Where'd you hear about that? He's like, Never mind. There, he's like, never mind all that. Yeah, yeah. And then they look up, and we see... I've never been to a strip club where this was a thing. Yeah, neither have I. They were underneath the stage. Like, it was like a glass stage, and they were standing underneath it and looked up, and there's a girl stripping on top of the... Doesn't seem too practical. Glass thing. I mean, seems great. Seems great, but, like, how do you throw the money up there, you know? You it should be a scenario where, like, you pay for it. Kind you of pay thing. a little bit to go underneath there, like, ah. like each dancer that you're underneath there for, you got to give fifty bucks to, mm. and then you're underneath and you're watching from that view. Oh shit! That's that's what it should be. They did not. They were like leaving, and then they look up and they're like, oh. "Hmm, there's a pussy right there." And it's like you know they could have talked in the car. They had to go to the strip club. Absolutely. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Didn't want anyone, or really just to look at tits, right? You know, negotiating with tits. Yeah, well, his dad, that's how that's how we got dad in on this. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, makes sense. Jack Danny Raybert, he insists that his wife get a cut of it. Which is weird. Yeah, like Johnny True Love's like, we'll split it three ways. And he's like, how do you figure? He's like, you, me, and Dottie. He's like, my wife should get a cut too. He's like, you would share the money with her. And he's like, nah. He's like, what the fuck? Why, why yeah. would we he's give like, your wife a share? He's like, she gets to be in on it. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, listen, I, we're he's like, we're talking about murder, all right? Now, what I say goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're now in the truck, and Johnny True Love is like, you know, no one's gonna. He's, he's like, is anyone really gonna care if Mom dies? And Jack Danny Ryan was like, yeah, Rex will. Um, but JT disagrees. Yeah, you know, Rex is the dude who's with her. Yeah. And he's like, Ray, you should see the way she fucking treats that man. He'll be he'll be tickled pink when she's dead. 
So they they and say it's pouring out right now, and they're in their car. Yeah, yeah, pouring. They're sitting in the car in front of the trailer. Yeah, and they agree that Dottie can't know what's going on, but Johnny True Love's like, it'll be good for her. Like she can go to that Amazon school. Try, I, yeah. That Amazon school is that's what they a, say. A, yeah, it's a weird. Instead of having some alcoholic, brain-dead mother for another 20 years, she'll get to go to that Amazon school. And he's like, all right, all right. And then Dottie is just standing in the window of the truck in the pouring rain. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, shit. And Dottie looks at Johnny True Love and she's like, what are you doing here? And he goes, yeah, mom, mom kicked me out. And then she says... You built this whole city all by yourself? And I'm like, what he, the fuck did he go? He goes, yeah, you know, brick by brick. <laughs> brick by brick. <laughs> and then she smiles and says, yeah, I heard about that at the wedding. And then walks back inside, and he looks at Dad, and Dad's like, yeah, her, her sleepwalking's been getting a lot worse. Dude, and <laughs> the moment before they said sleepwalking, I'm like... Oh, oh! This is going to be like an Exorcist movie or something. Like this, this girl's <laughs> possessed by like a fucking demon. <laughs> like that's where we're going with this. Yeah, I, I'm glad they didn't. <laughs> Bro, yeah, me glad too. they didn't. Yeah, so it's not. She's she's, she's not she's sleepwalking. <laughs> she goes back inside and they they talk about her sleepwalking. And then Johnny True Love's like, is she, is she with anyone, or has she been with anyone yet? And Dad's like, Nah, man. It's, as far as I know, she's still a fucking virgin. Just so, it's so weird. And he's like, man, really? Huh. It's crazy. And then they walk inside. Once they get inside, as soon as they're inside, Dottie's standing there and she goes, heard y'all talking about killing mama. I think it's a good idea. And Johnny True Love looks at Jack Danny Rayburn and he's like, there you go. I, dude, there's so, like, there's so many things that happen in this movie where I'm like, I... I was not expecting that. Yeah, she's I got it in. I, because then it's like the moment before it made no sense. There's so many things I'm like, what? How, how does this happen? Yeah, uh, just, just fucking stringing those two things together. But it's almost like it's intentional just to throw me off or us off. For the sure. Viewer, you know? They want it to be like, okay, this whole movie, they're going to be keeping the little girl in the dark. She's yeah. not going to know what's going on. And then she's like, I'm in. Boom. Like immediately. Yeah. And they're like, okay. <laughs> Fuck. I don't know what to expect. Uh, Keep me on my toes. Thank you, William Freakin. Friedkin. Friedkin, Friedkin. Which, whichever. Yeah. Johnny True Love is sleeping on the couch. He's tossing and turning all night. Th- this is the weirdest thing I think I've He's dreaming seen. about catching lizards, gunshots, and Dottie, his little sister, getting naked in the hallway of the trailer and putting her hands up to fight. Bruh. And, like, he, like, wakes up a couple times. Like, like it looks like he wakes up, but really he's still in the dream because he's seeing this. Oh! oh! Microphone fell. Yeah. Only only the video, only the viewers got to see that. Yeah, limp mic. Uh, limp mic. Yeah. <laughs> L- but, like, he's catching lizards. He's, like, seeing a gun being fired. And he's seeing his kid sister naked in the hallway. And we see her naked. Dude. So the actress is... 23 years old at the time of this filming. I had to look it up because they have her play much younger and she pulls it off. I, I, and we'll get to that, yeah. but I couldn't tell if they were 100% trying to do that. Oh, yeah, they were. I, yeah. yeah, so we'll get um, to it. So that's, that's a thing. Yeah. And now back in the trailer park, it's the next day. Matthew McConaughey is Killer Joe. He arrives looking cool as fuck. He's got a cowboy hat on. He's got fucking leather gloves, big belt buckle. He he looks out of his fucking mind. And, and little fun fact, um, uh, about three years later, he ends up playing a character named Joseph Cooper, Joe Cooper. So, In what movie? Interstellar. Oh, that's his name? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. So look at that. So we did Interstellar. We have an episode on that where... Matthew McConaughey is playing Joe Cooper. And now in this fucking movie, well, it's really the opposite. So he, this movie is three years before Interstellar. And, he, and it, dude, talk about complete opposites, bro. I love that. Because, <laughs> like, it is very realistic that the writer and the director were unfamiliar with the, the movie Killer Joe. Oh, 100%. They, they did gr- not have any idea. The fact that Matthew McConaughey wasn't like, hey... I did this NC-17 movie where I did some weird shit, and that was my name. 
we should change the name of my character in this movie. This, or, this like feel good space movie about like finding new planets and stuff. We should ch- the fact that he did not say that makes me like Matthew McConaughey. Or the writers for Interstellar was like, we want to, we love Joe Cooper so much. We want to give him a twist. We want to give him a story arc, a character arc. We're gonna make him become a fucking astronaut that deals with higher dimensional beings and shit. So this character just went on a crazy character arc. That'd be that'd be too tough. You think? Be too, yeah, because like, how old is this Joe Cooper, and how old is Joe Cooper in Interstellar? Because he had been an astronaut years <laughs> before, <laughs> and then like twenty years later, this was all happening. Like in that scenario, Matthew McConaughey is like fourteen years old in this movie. And then like the Interstellar writers, like, well, it was always my dream just to make like some fucking psychopath become like some. Brave, some like hero, father yeah. who's, trying to, <laughs> who's trying to save the world. Yeah, so that was their subliminal message. Uh, no, I, I like the idea that like Matthew McConaughey didn't saw say, it, yeah, and was just like, fucking thing. Nope, no, he's like no. rolling with it. Yeah, because because he's probably thinking too. If I show them that I even did this role, that could possibly hurt my chances of even being in this movie. Maybe because they didn't want, like, a, I don't know. Like, maybe yeah, not. I, I guess, maybe I guess, not. But no, I guess it was a big enough movie to where... Maybe you're like... Matt Damon could have played McConaughey's role. Yeah. Like, like, like it wouldn't have been great, like... And then you get someone lesser than Damon to play Matt Damon's role. Like, And you think, like, now, they, like, the director's like, oh, I don't know, man. Matthew yeah. McConaughey left a bad taste in my mouth after that last yeah. movie. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Playing the same name. Yeah. I love that it's the same name. Bunch of bunch of good facts. I, I love it. So you're two for two. Two for two. Two for two. Keep it up. Yeah. So even the dog fucking respects him. <laughs> yeah. T Bone's just <laughs> sitting there wagging his tail. This is the one time he walks I think, up. The, I think it's the only time. So there's a couple times, but it, it's always. But it's only when there had to be like a subliminal, like there's there something you're supposed to catch on to with the dog. Yeah. On when he barked and when he didn't, I didn't really, but I noticed when he wasn't. Yeah. Uh, it's great. There you go. Dottie is in the trailer. Practicing Bruce Lee karate moves, like watching a Bruce watching Bruce Lee videos and like practicing the moves. McConaughey is knocking on the door and looking through the window, and then he just lets himself in. Yeah, I, I gotta say, you know, for her practice, um, her hands weren't that good, but her front kick wasn't too bad. There we go, <laughs> Dottie. If you're watching, Braden, the self taught professional kickboxer here, been doing it for like <laughs> six months. <laughs> <laughs> He's, you know, you got a good front kick. Yeah, good keep front working kick. on it. Yeah, d- definitely keep working on it. Think about your set, you know, some head movement a little bit too, but yeah, not bad. Yeah, yeah he lets himself in and like she's scared at first and he's very calm and he tells her, hey, you got some nice moves. You should get like a real, like a, like a karate teacher. You should go to, you go to karate classes and learn that stuff. And then he's like, can I trouble you for a cup of coffee? And she's like, yeah, oh yeah, of course. Let me, let me get your jacket. And gets it like, like she's like serious, a... serious sexual tension. Yeah, immediately. Yeah, immediately. And the actress is twenty three, but is made to seem like she's ten years old. The the way she acts, you're like, oh, yeah, the ch- way she acts. This is yeah. a child. Yeah. Um, serious sexual tension. Emil uh, Hirsch isn't there. Neither is the dad. Matthew Connery says he's early. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he says he's a detective. And she's like, oh, like Magnum P.I.? And he's like, nah, he was a private detective. I'm a regular detective with Dallas Police Station. And she goes, yeah, and, and he ain't real neither. <laughs> he's like, very good. Magnum P.I. is not real. He's a character. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So, little fun fact. Um, apparently, I, mean, I mean, is this going to be, are you going to be three I don't three? know. This is going yeah. to be hard. Um, <laughs> apparently, Matthew McConaughey was supposed to play one of the main detectives in, like, Magnum P.I., for, like, a movie that was supposed to be done, but it never got fully done. It's not as good as the other There's still time. Yeah. There's still time is what you're saying. Yeah. Still time. So (laughs) it'd be kind of weird if he ended up actually playing that detective in Magnum P.I. He's like, see? Every... Everything he does comes full circle. Branches off of Killer Joe. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Everyone in Hollywood's like, this is... This is it. This is a... He was actor of the year because of this. She asks if he's ever shot anyone, and if they die, both answers are yes. Matthew McConaughey then tells but he a says story, it though, like as if he's just like comforting her. It's like weird. It's like he is not seducing her, 
He's seducing her. He's seducing her, but, like, not too strong at this point. He's almost, like, comforting her by the way he's saying it. But it's, like, and also, like, building trust and stuff. But it's just weird how he's saying, like, yeah, yeah, I've murdered people. I've shot people. I've killed people. Yeah. What about his story? Huh? What about his story that he then tells? Oh, yeah. You got it. Do you think that was comforting? No. (laughs) But, but he, that, tells, he tells a story about, and like he builds the, he's like, and I was scared, you know, I didn't know what I was walking into. And then this fat man, I got a call to a house, I could hear someone screaming in the back. And then this fat man, as soon as I open the bedroom door, he tackles me. And he wasn't trying to hurt me or nothing, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't attacking me, he wanted <laughs> me to help him. Because he had doused his genitals in lighter fluid. Did. You see... His girlfriend, he'd caught her cheating on him, and he wanted to teach her a lesson of some sort. So he doused his genitals in lighter fluid, and he set them on fire. And I don't know, you know, maybe uh, to teach her a lesson. Yeah. I, I don't know if he, you know, if she got the lesson out of that. I hope she did. And then Dottie's like, oh my God, is, is he okay? And he goes... Charlotte. No. Huh? Did, oh, he didn't say his name. Her name. Dottie is her name. Dottie. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I was about to say Charlotte. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dottie says, is he okay? And he says, no. He was not okay. His genitals were on fire. <laughs> like, you're just like, what the fuck is going on in Dude, this movie? I, yeah. It, it's all these lines are like. Dottie then says. My aunt set herself on fire one time. She didn't do it on purpose or nothing. She was standing too close to the furnace and she caught fire. That's the aunt everyone said I looked the most like, you know? She, uh, what was it? Her name was Viva. Isn't that a pretty name, Viva? Like, just like that. Like, Bro. like she's child, like, she just, like, fired. My aunt set herself on fire. Her name was Viva. Isn't that pretty? Everyone says I look like Viva looked. Like, just like that. Like, it's so, it's so fucking insane, this whole movie. It's so The weird. phone then rings for a while. Like, 12 seconds. And Matthew McConaughey finally says, you gonna get that? And she says, it's for you. And <laughs> he gets up and answers the phone. So what I find weird about that scenario, too, is that she's literally talking about Viva lighting herself on fire, but saying it as, yeah, I'm just like Viva. I looked just like Viva. No, but like... Yeah, she said that too, but I'm saying, like, she was acting as if they're saying... I think she even said something else as well at the end there that was supposed to be, like, yeah, we're... Like, almost like I want to be like her. I didn't catch it. You didn't You didn't feel like that? I didn't catch the line that you were uh, talking oh, about. The, oh, the line. Had I caught that line, I yeah. might agree with you. I feel that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it, was, it, was a, it was a really weird, like, re, like there was something in the back of her mind as the reason why she's telling him that anyway. And it was also like to try and bond. It was just so, it's so weird. This movie is so fucking weird. It, it, it is. These two make me very uncomfortable. I was, I when was they, every time Matthew McConaughey and this girl are on the screen together, I am very uncomfortable. And guys, it takes a good bit to make me uncomfortable. Yeah. I am very uncomfortable every time these two are in a scene together. Yeah, man. I'm going to be thinking about this for a while. Rest of your life. Bro, like, but, like, trying to, like, understand what they're kind of getting to. Like, whether it's the writer, the actors, everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, when it comes to this just, type of... Just life experience, you It's know? just so fucking weird. Writer was just telling their story. Yeah. That's all they were doing? God, the trauma. So, Matthew McConaughey <laughs> answers the phone... <laughs> And it's Johnny True Love, and he's uh, he's at a, he's at a muffler shop. His dad's like welding shit, and he's like, "Yeah, my dad couldn't leave work. Could you come meet us where Bob's muffler shop. There's an abandoned pool hall right next door. We can meet there." He's like, "Can you come meet us? Bring Dottie with you. She can show you how to get there." McConaughey just says, "Don't ever change plans on me again." Hangs and up. Hangs up before Johnny True Love can be like, "Yeah, I'm really sorry." <laughs> and then he's like, "Oh, he's, he's not on the phone." That's insane, though. Like, just that alone, like, pissed me off as the viewer. I'm like, bro, you're making everyone in this movie so fucking stupid. It's, like, yeah. insane. Absolutely. Bro, it's... it's. Dottie then asks Matthew McConaughey, she says, are you going to kill my mama? 
She tried to kill me when I was a little baby. Dude. She was happy because she thought she had done it, and I wouldn't become more than she did. But she didn't. She didn't send me back up to him. And, like, looks up. She, she just made me sick. Maybe not be for a little while. Dude. <laughs> Maybe not be for a little while. Bro. But then I was. And she was sad because I was. Because I always will be. I don't think my jaws drop more <laughs> in a movie than this one. And by, by the way, kind of goes, how do you know she tried to kill you? Because she says, when I was a little baby. Like, like so I imagine yeah, yeah. less than one years old. Like, like not, not being able to move and shit. She goes, because I remember. It's <laughs> fucking bizarre. Dude. Made me, just made me sick. Maybe not be for a little while. But then I was. And she was mad that I was. And that I always will be. God, this man. fucking girl, dude. Like, if you, oh man, I don't even know what to say. It's like, bro, I can't, I can't relate. At, you know, so sure you can. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, your mama never tried to kill you and just made you sick, made you not be for a little while. Now that you're but talking then you, about but it, but then you were it. these trust issues. Yeah, because really ma- really mama know. made you not be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for a little while, for a little while. But then you were. But then I were because David, you you came into my life and you just sprung this whole new me back into existence i was just lost no made me not be for a while yeah is her saying like i wasn't she, she was dead for oh that's what that's what i take not be made, I, I just thought, made me sick made me not be for oh, a i took while. it as like i take she it was as so distraught like no emotionless no for, no I, I take it mom like like she was unconscious for a while and then she like woke up and came to Oh, that's I what I, th- that is the only way I could take not be. I thought she was taking, I thought she was saying like, oh, I'm now normal, even though she's weird as fuck. And then like for a huge period of time, she was just not. No, it has to be. She was dead. Yeah. It has to be. She made me dead for a little while. That's fucked. Yeah. Or unconscious. I passed out. Whatever it is. That's crazy. Yeah. Not be. We're now at the real meeting. They, they show up at the abandoned pool hall next to muffler shop. And there's a small – there's no one else around. There's a small child just standing in front of the I abandoned saw that. pool hall. And I was like, what's what's this trying to show? Yeah, yeah. just that, that kid's – that kid's got a rough too. Yeah. Everyone's got a rough in this movie. That's what it's trying to show. Literally. The small child ju- is just standing there. Dottie stays out front. McConaughey goes in. Yeah. Um, McConaughey says he doesn't have a lot of time and just looks around. And Johnny Trill's like, yeah, all right, all right, I oh, get it. Oh, he doesn't just look around. He goes and, he, like... He's, like, opening shit up. He's making sure they're alone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's got a... Yeah. They're negotiating a murder. He's got to make sure... Everywhere, he's just fucking... I everywhere. thought you were really looking there. Oh. I thought, like, what, is someone fucking over there? Is, what's happening? It's fucking Matthew McConaughey. Hey, you guys talking about <laughs> me? you talking about my movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the third one of my movies y'all motherfuckers have done. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. And Johnny Trill's like, yeah, all right, so... You know, like, neither of us want to do this, but it's just, it's got to be done, you know? McConaughey goes, that's got nothing to do with me. You're going to pay me for a service that I'm going to perform. You're going to get me her exact schedule, and you won't know how or when I plan on doing it. He's like, like, I don't care about your whole backstory. And I I appreciate that. No, yeah, he's He's like, you're paying me. He's like, you're paying me to kill somebody. This is my job. You're going to pay me. You're going to pay me my rate. My quote. That's my rate. Yeah, um, and, Very and I'm gonna fucking do it. Yeah. And Giant Shrimp's like, all right. He's like, and I got a few rules. He's like, if you get caught and you turn me in, you will die. He's like, I'll kill you if you tell anyone that you hired me to do this. Uh, he he repeats it multiple. He's like, yeah. let me be clear. He's like, you will die. And that his, I will kill you. And that his rate is twenty five thousand up front. And that's like twenty five thousand. I thought it was twenty. And Johnny Trill is- Johnny Trill was like, yeah, whatever, twenty five is fine. Yeah, the upfront part of it is an issue, and like starts to try to explain the life insurance thing. And McConaughey's like, I don't give a fuck. Well, at and first just- he's like, it always is. Yeah, he's like, oh, he's like, he's like, our mom, our mom has this life insurance policy, and he goes, they always do. Yeah, always <laughs> do. Great response. He's like, used to this shit. Yeah, uh, and he says, this conversation is finished. I never met you. You never met me. Yeah. Because they can come to an agreement on on he, whether paying early or not. He's like, this is non-negotiable. Yeah. He's like, I get my money up front. Yeah. 
And then he steps outside and looks out and sees Dottie ballerina dancing in the street. And then he turns around and says, of course, we never discussed the possibility of a retainer. Yeah. You know where to reach me. Call me if she's interested. And, and like, Johnny and True like, Love oh. is like, uh, you mean my sister? And he says, he says hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> talking about my sister? He goes, oh, is that who she is? And then he gets in the car and leaves. Boom. Jack Danny Rayburn has no idea what Matthew McConaughey meant. He is so confused. It's so funny. And Johnny True Love is like, how fucking stupid are you? Honestly. He's like, how fucking stupid? And Jack Danny Rayburn throws a pool, like a ball, billiards ball at him, and he like ducks and it but, misses him. Well, let's say, and that hit him in the head. Dead. Dead. <laughs> so dead. Like, dead. Um... And Jack Danny which, Rayburn's which, like which even just to act it out. Like he throw like on the So So we don't see Johnny True Love duck. No, we do. I thought we saw it. We see him ducked. Oh, okay. We see him already down. I imagine when they did it, yeah. like the camera was on the dad and Johnny was already yeah. ducked down. He was already ducked and then just like he and then had he just, a move then he, just like a slight bit yeah, more to, and, yeah, and then yeah, he yeah. throws it high. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like like there, there's no way they were risking it for, <laughs> yeah, for the bro, fucking budget they had. There's no way they were risking losing the yeah, second thing. Throw it right at it in yeah. Mule's head and yeah, he'll and duck. Mule, yeah, duck quick. Yeah, right, yeah be quick about it. Be quick. <laughs> uh Jack Danny wow. Rayburn's like, we'll just kill ourselves. Giant Chula's like, Oh, you're gonna kill someone and get away with it? You can't even tell time. There's so much shit you just you, you think they know and they just don't. And then Johnny <laughs> says, "So I got this dude, Elvis. He he kind of he's kind of just my bitch. He does stuff for me. He owes me some money. <laughs> I think he'll kill her for us." And Dad's like, "Fuck yeah, you will. Great, but I got one rule." And he goes, "What's that?" And he says, "No more music videos." He goes, "That's what's up. No more music videos." And then yeah. they fucking they take her out in the canyons in California and. Kill her. Yeah. Shot and, her. And she's like, Frankie, I don't want to die. Please, <laughs> please don't do it, Frankie. I love you. Frankie's like, I got to okay, tape your mouth, all right? Yeah, You're going to be okay. fine. I'm not going to let anything happen to you. Yeah. Shh. I think once a year we need to do Alpha Duck on this. Yeah, no. I, I, think, <laughs> I, think, I think that it will become an annual tradition on the Five Six Kings that we redo, we revisit Alpha Dog yeah. every year. I mean, it's one of the best. It's, it's the best. Yeah. The best. Yeah. No, he, uh, <laughs> Johnny True Love says. I mean, we could we can give him Dottie, and the dad says, "Yeah, yeah. Honestly, it might just do her some good." These <laughs> pieces of shit, dog. It's like I feel bad, bro. Like I really feel bad if there's anyone watching this movie and can relate. Like, god damn, dude. There's gotta be someone. Yeah. Oh, for sure. There's, gotta be there's, someone. There's some. There's someone for sure. And not this exact scenario, but a no, no. But a scenario similar, where yeah. they were trailer park people and their dad uh, dad owed someone some money. And yeah. He's like, well, you could fuck my my twelve year old daughter. Is that <sighs> does that work for you, dude? Can you? Oh my god. And like, where did they say? Is this? Did he say that where this is taking place? Dallas, baby. Dallas. That's right. That's right. Oh yeah, I I, I thought something. And that's else. why that is why they did Dallas Buyers Club. Bro. That's why McConaughey did everything. It. He was in. he was like I loved I loved being just a dirty Dallas person so much. The agent was Round like two. Matthew. I don't think this is gonna suit you. He's like no. Listen, once when I do this, this is gonna reset my career. My career is gonna, gonna pop off from here. Right at like a year later, I'm gonna get an AIDS movie based out of Dallas because I played someone in Dallas already. Where I'll win an Oscar, and then from there. And let's, let's be, he should not have won an Oscar. I, you know, I, I, I don't even think, I, I think I might have seen only parts of, I, no, I did see the movie. I did, I did see the full well, movie. So, like, he, he was fine in it. Yeah. He was fine. He lost a bunch of weight for it. Like, that's yeah, always yeah. cool to see someone do. But Wolf of Wall Street came out that year. Yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio was so much better in Wolf of Wall Street. Dude, the range. It was, it was fucking phenomenal. Phenomenal. And, no, seriously, and, the and range. McConaughey won it because he was like, I'm not no fucking faggot. I ain't a faggot. 
I didn't get he like wants to fight the doctor. He's like, I can't have AIDS, I'm not a fag and then he's friends with gay people now and selling AIDS drugs. Like it was fine. Yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio was so much better. Yeah. I will I will die on that hill. If anyone wants to disagree, come down to the five six one, see what fucking happens. Yeah, I actually didn't see Dallas. I saw I thought you were referring to, to mud. No, mud was awful. Yeah. I was, <laughs> mud I, was so bad. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I need to see uh, Dallas. I've only seen Mud like, clips Mud of it. Two Never Clean on the other hand. Great movie. Why? Because there's mud everywhere. Bro. We thought last time was bad. Nope. We need we need to get this high school library cleaned up. There's mud everywhere. Everywhere. Um, so <laughs> Sharla is working at a pizza place and she's on a phone with some dude looking at naked pictures and she's like, don't be silly. No one will ever see him. It's not like your face or in him or nothing. <laughs> Her boss says Is that a personal call and she goes, nope, too large pepperoni. Just like that. And then she's clearly, and then she's setting up. She's like, when are you going to pick me up? She's like, all right, the motel behind the. Behind the mall? Okay. Like, like she's clearly going to go, fuck a dude. And then... And her daughter, Bonnie. Bonnie, I put down. That's a typo. Dottie. Yeah. Walks Bonnie, Dottie. Either or. Dottie's a weird name. I was going to say Bonnie. What? Yeah. So Dottie, yeah. Dottie walks in and starts picking olives off of a made pizza and eating them. Which is she's strange. in the kitchen. Yeah, but, but apparently she's got, like... Super awareness, hearing. So let's 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 let's, let's get there. Yeah. In a yeah. Second. Daddy says, "Can I get some money? I'm gonna stop the store so I can get some things to fix supper." And Charlotte goes, "Yeah, hey Jenny, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to call you back later." And then hangs up the phone, yeah. saying she's on with Jenny. Yeah. Uh, Charlotte then says, "You know, I'll give you a couple extra bucks, and why don't you go buy yourself a nice dress? You know, we got guests for supper." And she's like, I get dressed up for that? She's like, yeah, it'll be nice. Dottie asks, she's like, was that your boyfriend on the phone? Yeah. Like, there we go. Yeah. And Charlotte's like, no, I'm, I'm married. I'm, I'm married, married, silly. I'm married to your dad, silly. That was my friend Jenny, an old friend from high school. And she brings the pizza that Dottie was just like picking toppings off and eating to a table. And this guy isn't cool about it. He goes... I asked for no offer. Oh, come on. I'm gonna no. 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 He goes, I said no black olives. Just like like the second she gets there with it. Yeah. Fucking furious about it. Well, it probably took forever. I, that's fucking crazy. You you handle that like a normal portion. You go, hey, I actually said no black olives. Yeah, I was thinking that exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I said no black olives. Just like that. Yeah. And she looks angry. And then yells to the kitchen, I need another Supreme, no black olives, I'm taking my lunch break. And then her and Dottie go sit down and eat the pizza. So, like, so like, she did it on purpose. He didn't fucking know that, though. Oh, yeah. She did it on purpose. She's like, he's going to not eat it, and then Dottie and I will eat the fucked up pizza. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even yeah, catch that. Yeah, for sure. Her oh, and Dottie wow. start eating the pizza. Dottie tells her, she's like, you know, you deserve a cute boyfriend. And she's like, what's saying that? I'm... I'm married to your dad. That's my friend Jenny from high school. And then Dottie said, I had a boyfriend in third grade that nobody knew about. This fat kid, Marshall. We kept it a secret. It was our secret. You know, we never, we didn't eat lunch together. We didn't hang out at recess. He didn't walk me home from school or nothing. Because then it wouldn't have been a secret. She's like, so when did you see each other? We saw each other in class. And mom's like, no, but when did you see each other alone? She's like, we didn't. It would have ruined the secret. But we loved each other. And she's like, well, how do you know that if you all never, y'all never talked about it? She's like, so it was unspoken. It was pure love. It was better than, than normal love. It was pure. I really hope that this is what Sarah McKenna says <laughs> 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 about, about me and her. <laughs> Can you just imagine she's out with like her stepmom and she's like, yeah, this, <laughs> this fat kid. <laughs> This fat kid they braided the third grade. <laughs> he said, yeah, it was pure love because no matter how many times I turned him down, he always kept asking me yeah, out. Yeah, it was pure. No matter how much everyone laughed at him for me turning him down, <laughs> he still always asked. That's pure love right there. That's pure love. <laughs> he was so fat. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, oh my God. So, so Dottie, Dottie says it's Matthew McConaughey coming over for dinner, isn't it? His eyes hurt. <laughs> what? <laughs> His eyes hurt? I, I try that, to take that like maybe when she looks at him, it like almost like she's so taken back, like so attracted to him, it almost hurts to look at him or something. I don't know. Like I was or, like, or the way he looks at her hurts. Her, yeah, in what type of way? Like she feels uncomfortable. Okay, but, yeah. that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like All that. Right. Okay, Jack Danny Rayburn then walks in the pizza. Totally shop. Totally could see that. <laughs> Jack Danny Rayburn walks in, and Sharla says. Now, you keep your mouth shut about Jenny, all right? She's an old friend from high school. I don't need your dad asking any questions about her. <laughs> like, that made it so much more suspicious. Yeah. Like, she was pretty convincing up to Do- that point. Dottie then smiles and says, you should have a cute boyfriend. Like, she is Mary, an angel, and she sees all. That's that's Dottie. D- that's Dottie for yeah. you, baby. That's Dottie. <laughs> yeah. She'll, she'll, she'll make you feel exactly the way you should feel, which is like shit. <laughs> you know, like Sharla gives Dottie uh, the dress money, and Jack Danny Raven says, "Yeah, I'm gonna bring you. I'll bring you to the thrifty. You can pick out a nice dress. Thrifty, like, like good, Goodwill, yeah. thrift store. And he asks for beer money as well. And she's like, "Yeah, my purse is downstairs. Let's go get it." And then he walks down, and oh, Dottie, Dottie asks if everyone is getting dressed up, and he's like, "Uh, yeah, no." Of course, of course we'll all get dressed yeah. up. They walk down. Jack, Danny, Rayburn, they're going down to the purse. And Charles like, you got to tell Dottie what's going on, you know? He's like, yeah, she'll figure it out eventually. Like, no, she's not. She's not like you or me or uh, Johnny True Love, you know? She can't put two and two together and figure stuff out. She's not smart like us. <laughs> Dottie's clearly the smartest person in yeah, this family. clearly. Like, like the she's f- out there and weird, but she is the smartest by a mile. So, so question. Do you think she was ever ever had a problem with sleepwalking or do you think that was all a facade just to just to do and hear what she wants i don't know because we're we're saying she's smart they made it seem that there was a past of her always sleepwalking do you think she's just been I mean, finessing everyone this whole time i mean good on her if she is I kind of think she is. Yeah, that would make sense. You know? Because she heard them. She heard them and then reacted. Yeah, exactly. (sighs) She's the smart one. Yeah. Um, They're they're talking about it, and Charlo refers to it as a date. And Dad's like, this isn't a date. And then she says, I mean, it's the closest she's probably ever going to get to a date, except for some fat kid who doesn't even know she's dating him. And he's like, what (laughs) fat kid? You got to stop, bro. You're making me feel bad now. I mean, this is the fucking... (laughs) I I didn't write this shit. (laughs) And he's like, what fat kid? What are you talking about? And <laughs> the mom then says, we just need to make sure you need to tell her so she knows what to do so she doesn't disappoint Matthew McConaughey. This is fucking insane. Bro. So she doesn't disappoint him. There's, it's crazy how so many people are like, yeah, she needs to have sex with this man. And not disappoint him. And not disappoint. Yeah, not yeah. Exactly. It's insane. They uh, so they go to the thrifty, and she gets a black dress, and puts it on. They're back in the trailer. Jack Danny Rayburn's watching monster trucks on TV. I fucking love this part. <laughs> <laughs> and she comes out, and she's wearing it, and he has her spin around. Hold on, hold on. right before this though. The fucking mo- he's watching monster trucks on TV, and the monster truck like comes down off a fucking hop, and like. Breaks one of the wheels. He's like, ah, hope he's got a spare. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just fucking loved it, bro. Like, you could just tell this guy really lives his life. Like, he's and just... And that's such a... It's a perfect thing for him. He probably ad-libbed it. That's, it's such a dumb person comment. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> my, dude, I'm going to drink Vaseline uh, and turn to the lamp. Oh, oh, he's got there's two South Park references. There we you know, go. There yeah. we go. <laughs> but, like, I oh, hope he's got a spare tire. <laughs> Can't get very far with the only three. <laughs> like it's fucking it's just so stupid to say it's that. So stupid. Duh, he's gonna 
He's not going to be able to ride very much without without four tires, huh? <laughs> you got to have four tires to ride your monster truck. You can't do it with three tires. You can't. Like, it's just so fucking stupid. What's great is there's no one around. So he <laughs> said that. And he said that. He said that completely to himself. He said that for him. Yeah. That was for him. <laughs> yeah. It was like oh, when God. you... It's like when you tell jokes and then just laugh in the middle yeah. and don't... And you don't feel the need to say the whole joke. You got the laugh for yourself, and then you'll stop. He does that not just on the podcast. We'll be hanging out. They'll start telling a joke, and then he'll I'm laugh notorious. in the middle of it hysterically, and then he will never finish the joke. I'm not good with jokes. Let me. Let me he's like, right he's now. like, ah, that was good. Oh, man. All right, man. Well, I'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs> like that. And I'm like, I can never get like, to the punchline. Yeah. I always fuck at the punchline. Yeah, but you know what? You make yourself laugh, and that's enough. That's enough. That's, that's enough. all I need, right? Because what's self-love? <laughs> <laughs> so he has Dottie spin around, and he keeps telling her how good she looks. Now, she looks like a fucking movie star. And he's like, yeah, and, come here. And she's like, how's my, is my, my butt look big? He's like, guys like big butts. She's like, how do you know? And he's like, from experience. I like big butts. But, but he puts her fucking. He puts his hand on her hip. Yeah, it's, like, yeah, it's weird. That's, it's all weird. You look like a movie star. It's it's uh it's. I swear to God, my my jaw was dropped the entire time. It was more dr- dropped than like connected. It, and it doesn't get better. No, it's she's not. Th- she then says, "What's the deal? Aren't you? Uh, why aren't you getting dressed?" He says, "Oh yeah, uh, we're not gonna be here. <laughs> it's gonna be you and Matthew McConaughey." And she like looks the dress. She's like, oh, I better go get changed. And he's like, No, 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 no. Where, where the great, dress? Where the great. dress? You look great in the dress. And she's like, No, no, I gotta get changed. And like he follows her. She's crying. She's panicking. She's trying to get changed. He, clo- she closed the door. I'm like, Don't you fucking close the door on me? And he like puts her up against the wall. And he's like, You look good. You look good in the dress. Why are you gonna change out of the dress? Johnny Shula runs in. And he's like, What the fuck's going on in here? She's like, she wants to change out of the dress. He's like, well, then let her fucking change. Like, don't you think she looks good in the dress? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck? He's like, it doesn't matter. She's like, don't you? You think she doesn't look good in the dress? Don't you think? <laughs> don't you think Matthew McConaughey will like her in the dress? She looks good in the dress. She should wear the fucking dress. And he's like, she doesn't want to wear the dress. She doesn't have to. Jesus fucking Christ. And he's like, oh, he's mad. And he like gets that out of there. He's like, wear whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> and then there's banging on the door, and they go answer it. And Matthew McConaughey's there, and he's like, the fuck are you two doing here? <laughs> he's like, the fuck are you two doing here? We discussed this. We were supposed to be alone. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we we were just leaving. Don't push it. And he, he goes, don't push it. We're leaving. And he goes, that's right, Junior. <laughs> don't push it. <laughs> now get out of here, right. no, boy. No, no, no. Oh, no? Now when we make arrangements, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. I expect <laughs> the details to have attention paid to them. He's like so <laughs> proper at like certain points. You're like, just, oh, this guy's a psycho. Johnny True Love nods. And Matthew McConaughey says, good boy. <laughs> Just like that. And Get out of here. And him and dad leave. Get out of here. They're outside. And Johnny True Love says, man, I wish you would have seen Charlotte first. I wouldn't have an issue with him fucking her. And Jack Danny Rayburn goes, hey, that's my fucking wife you're talking about. Dog. Like, Dog. I'd, I'd rather he fuck my young daughter than my wife. That's my wife. It's fucking insane. I just don't even know how to fucking react half the time, bro. Like, literally, and as then, I'm watching this movie, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to say. When this when this comes up, I don't know. And it immediately cuts to Charla fucking a dude dressed as a cowboy at a motel. That's his wife. Yeah. His wife's fucking other dudes, and they aren't getting someone to murder someone for them. That's Charla, baby. Oh, my God. So Dottie is now in her room... Profusively crying. crying, yeah. <laughs> just Pro- just cr- profusively. Yeah. Pro- profusively. It's not a word. What's the word? Profusely. 
perf- or, or, oh or yeah just, we did we looked yeah, this up or just hysterically you're, you're right but i like you, you've said it almost every episode we've done you've said profusely so why stop now yeah <laughs> <laughs> profusively crying profusely profusively profusively sounds better come on can we just like all, all agree <laughs> <laughs> let's, just, like, let's just make it the it word does, profusively does sound better it, it rolls off the tongue you're like yeah he's profusively crying yeah profusely <laughs> like you feel like it's just cutting short you know yeah. like you gotta add to it yeah I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> English. It's the hardest language. <laughs> Everyone says it. Ah. Everyone around the world agrees. Like, English is a hard language. They got, they, got, they got words like profusely and hysterically, but profusively isn't a word? What's, what, what gives with this language? I'm, I'm, I'm losing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what got you? Yeah. Profusively, she can't handle it. She's just fucking crying. It's just so fucking stupid. (laughs) It's so dumb. I can't believe I just made a fool of myself (laughs) on YouTube. (laughs) Oh, my God. Never going to live this down. We're never going to get the subway money. (laughs) Someone's going to be like, we're going to sponsor this kid. (laughs) doesn't even know profusely is a word. Ah. Ah. So, I'm sorry. So, uh, so Dottie's profusively crying in her room. <laughs> and Matthew McConaughey knocks on the door and he's like, hey, Dottie, we're all alone now. I'm it's yeah, me too. I'm getting them like, like my, vi- like I'm spinning. My vision's a little blurry. I'm a little dizzy. And I was like, oh man, how great would it be for this episode if I, yeah. Just like be, knock it. Be unconscious. amazing. I, it would make me not be for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was it's like a long one minute pause. Where, huh? Here's the thing: if that ever happens, if we're both out, we leave it in. <laughs> no, bro. <we're probably, laughs> like, if it's one of us, we gotta check on the other one and make sure and all that stuff. If we both go out, we leave it. <laughs> if it makes us both not be, and then we are, we leave it. Oh my god! So he he says, <sighs> breathe through the nose. Yeah, that's a, a supply of oxygen to the brain. My friend says it's on you if you don't want to come out. You can stay in there as long as you want. And he goes, casserole smells nice. And I wish I had a funny story about casserole or first dates. You know, maybe one will come to me. Maybe not. <laughs> this is all, she's in her room and he's just going throughout the rest of the trailer talking to her. And I, I He then starts, point, like, he starts playing a country artist named Lee Hazel. And he goes, ah, Lee Hazel. You know, I don't. I don't have a funny story about Lee Hazel either, Hazelwood either, or or Oklahoma. Or Oklahoma. <laughs> like, what? I guess Oklahoma's kind of funny though. You know, I I grew up right on the right on the border, the right on the on the south bank of the Red River, right across. And back in those days, the center of the Red River was the border between Oklahoma and Texas. But at some point, you know, you gave that border up. You gave Oklahoma the entire river. And, you know, something about that, you know, just just makes me mad, you know? Makes you feel like giving up your front porch. Bruh. This doesn't make sense. No, he's no. He's talking nonsense. No, what he's saying is this is metaphor for being like, I understand how you feel that you're giving up your virginity to me be- for your family. But it's not – it doesn't have to be like that. Like, let's – Let's get comfortable with each other and, and see where it goes kind of thing. I, that's exactly how I took it. Like, this is a metaphor for her giving up her virginity for these fucks when it's just... When it when when she shouldn't. So I think you're right. <laughs> Which is fucked. But, like... <laughs> it's, like, so messed up, the, right? <laughs> It's fucked that you put it together makes me think that you've had this conversation before. <laughs> The fact, because, you know, you explaining it, yeah, spot on. Spot on. (laughs) That's what it was. How did you know that? Well, when... uh, You've either talked someone into this or you were talked into it by your uncle. How do you think I lost my virginity so young? Your uncle. That's your trust uh, issues. Yeah, yeah. Your uncle fucked you. Yeah. And he was like, and I know you feel weird that you got to do this for the family, but, you know, Brayden, I'll take care of you, bud, you know? Let's get to know each other. Let's get comfortable. Let's eat some tuna casserole. Dude, it's like there's a story I want to say, but there's no way I could say it. Now I gotta say it, but maybe we'll have to cut this part out. So (laughs) yeah, I mean, yeah. So maybe don't use names if that's what would keep you from being able to tell the story. 
So I kn- do you or do you, is there a, is there a feature in there? Can you bleep out names on the audio? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but let's not run that risk. Okay. No names. No okay. names. So uh, the affiliation now. So, use use fake. Yeah. So some, talking code. This could be a fake story with fake names, fake places. So I know of someone who has daughters who have disowned their father for unknown reasons. And it made some people skeptical of those reasons. What would warrant disowning your father? Gotta be something like rape or something crazy. And this father is now getting remarried. And the new wife, they're kind of getting into the marriage pretty quickly. And the new wife is like, calling people up being like hey you know i don't we're i'm kind of moving into this fast is there anything i should know about him before i get married to him and everyone's like no <laughs> like here we're cool so then she ends up contacting his ch- his children these two girls that have disowned him for like 20 years and the the daughter's text message so she text he texted the uh the the the, ah, the daughters and the daughters texted her back just cursing her no okay yeah yeah just, okay <laughs> just just cursing her i actually had no idea about any of that no so, so i I'm, I'm i'm piecing i don't know any of the story that you're saying yeah i'm just trying to piece together so, wh- so that was my guess and i'm so happy i was wrong so <laughs> so happy i was like i love that family <laughs> i would have been so upset if you were like yeah so everyone was thinking like okay what warrants disowning your father it's got to be like molesting like something crazy the wa- the new wife texts you know, the daughters like hey you know we would love to have you guys you know at the wedding and i would love to meet you guys and everything like that and they immediately just snapped on her like fuck you for fucking contacting me who the fuck do you think you are you don't know anything about us or my fucking father he cheated on my mom and he's a fucking cheater and that's why we disowned him and he's going to cheat on you too which obviously there's not too crazy of a connection now to this but it was just about not not too much of a connection to this at all (laughs) i'll tell you after a little bit more connection that i don't want to give away but you haven't given up any names if anyone is listening like no one has any idea what the fuck you're talking about yeah so you cannot give names and still give all the details it sounds like you're saying cheating on the mom isn't that big of a deal and the daughter shouldn't be upset. No, they should be upset, but they shouldn't disown their father for cheating on their mother. I mean, sure they could. For 20 years and never talked to him again? And disown the rest of the family? Yeah. Yeah? You think that's, that's warrant? She, I mean, they're like, that's their mom. Okay, so, so He was like, that- hey, we're going to start a family. I love, like, this is going to be us. And then he was cheating on get a divorce and remarry. Yeah, yeah. So they got divorced. Don't, yeah. don't don't cheat on the mom while you have kids together. So I agree. Like you should yeah. be pissed off. But then let's say like other people in that family helped raise you, and then you disown them too because of this person's actions. Yeah, I don't I don't agree with that. Yeah, so that's part of it. But I'll I'll sorry I, we kind of rambled on about this. Um, but it's someone that's very that I know and shit like that. So obviously, do I? Yeah, of of yeah. No, up, okay, yeah. but not close enough to where. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So I'll tell you after. That's too bad. Which has the connection? Sorry, you guys just don't really get it as much. But like, I mean, we're, did, I the, did the dad fuck one of them or someone in the family? No. What's the connection? Uncle. So his brother fucked them. No, it's 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 my uncle. Oh, it's your uncle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So now it's totally up to you if you want to cut all of this out. Know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you want to cut all of this out, we can. Um, it's your call. It's your call. 100% your call. Uh, let's pause and take a piss break. We'll right, guys, we're <laughs> we're going to take a little break. And we'll, we'll, either, we'll either be back on the heels of this story. Or this will be cut and you'll be hearing a different, hey, we're going to take a break, guys. We'll be right back. <laughs> so stick around. All right. <laughs> okay. And, and we're back. <laughs> Whoa. 
And uh, as you guys can tell, we kept it in. So Braden's gonna Braden's gonna clear the air a little bit. Yeah. So um, yeah, Uncle's a uh, great guy getting married to a new girl and uh, apparently cheated on his uh, ex-wife. And uh, who is like my aunt that has never talked to me again? <laughs> you're butcher, you're butchering the story, man. <laughs> you're butchering the clear up. No, yeah. So, so apparently, he cheated on his ex wife, and his and his kids disowned him, and that and that's basically the story. Yeah, and you yeah, know, like I just think it's ridiculous that they could disown him over cheating on their mom. Meanwhile, like he was making you suck and fuck like. Every- <laughs> Every weekend for your entire childhood, and you're you're still his fucking nephew. Yeah, man, I love my uncle through and through. You know, like no matter what, no matter what he does to you, no matter <laughs> what he makes you do. Yeah, you love the man. And, and if he was to ever invite me to his wedding, <laughs> I wasn't invited. I would be there. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't invited because he was like, I can't have him telling my new wife the stuff I've done to him. <laughs> No, when I told David, I was like, you know, he probably doesn't want, like, if his kids aren't going to show up, like, he probably doesn't want any kids to show up. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds fucked. My uncle's a great guy. I love my uncle. Um, yeah. yeah. Congrats on the, the new, Congrats, the new yeah, marriage. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and she's awesome. The, the, new wife, the new wife is awesome. Well, that's, the that's, old that's wife, that's what, I would cheat on. That's fucked up. That is. But she never said, you know, hi to me again. So what did I do, aunt? Sorry, bro. this is taking a weird turn. Great would it be how, <laughs> how great would it be if he was molesting you? <laughs> they found that out, and to them, that, that was, was enough. That, that that was that was him cheating on mom. Not that was him molesting oh. Brayden, and like you're the whore, and that's why they don't talk to me. You're the fucking whore that he cheated on his wife with. Bro, talk about a twist. We should Dude. put this into a movie. I mean, it's done. <laughs> done. What should we call it? The Braden Bullard story. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a biopic, you know? There we go. Yeah. Ah. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's the Bullard family for you guys, you know? You know, we're uh, we're getting too loud over here. Yeah, I'm so, oh, man. So, guys, back to the movie, <laughs> which isn't any less weird than it's, it's about to get just weird. So, you know? Well timed. Dottie comes out of her room and he smiles big. He takes off his hat and he's got flowers behind his back and he gives them to her. And uh, he's like, How are you? And she's like, I'm fine. He's like, You're going to ask how I am? She's like, How are you? He goes, I'm fine too. Yeah, he says that dear. she looks nice and she's like, Oh, yeah, I changed. I was in a, yeah, I was in a dress earlier, but that just wasn't me. He goes, I'd, I'd love to see it. And she says, your eyes hurt. Goes, I beg your pardon? And then she asks, or no, she says nothing. And he says, do you trust me, Dottie? Not and quite. She, yes. Good. <laughs> Good. Good. Yes. Good. <laughs> she then sets the table and says, I'm still a virgin, you know. And he's like, yeah, I know. She gets the casserole out, and it's tuna casserole. And he says, put the dress on. <laughs> it's so weird because at first it's like he's really trying to comfortably ease her into being like comfortable around him to be in the dress and shit. And then just like kind of put the dress on. And she says, how are you going to kill my mama? And he goes, nah, that's not dinner conversation. And then she says, are you going to be the detective who investigates it? And he says, probably not. I am sometimes. She says, is that weird for you? He's like, that's convenient. I know. I know. I know. I won't go down for it. <laughs> yeah. Best case scenario is yeah. I'm the detective. Yeah. Uh, Dottie then, she tells a story about how she got real mad at her mama one time and she was crying and she went outside and Johnny True Love came out and laid on top of her until she stopped crying. He fucked her, right? But, that's, that's, like, I that's, was just about to say. That's what the story is? Because she's she, telling a story about her older brother fucking her? 
I'm that. Yeah, that's what I. That's how basically how I took it. And I was like, Am I not supposed to be taking it like this? I, I mean, he laid on top of her. And she like made a point to. He didn't like, say nothing. He just laid on top he, of me and he until just I stayed. Crying. And he just stayed laying there until I stopped crying. Yeah, which is a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew McConaughey then says, Dottie, bring the dress. And she obliges. Yeah. She gets up and goes and gets the dress. And she comes out holding it. And he says, now why wouldn't you wear that for me? Or don't, don't you think I would have liked to see you in that? And she smiles and says, you know, I had a boyfriend once. And he cuts her off in the middle of that. Yeah. And says, put the dress on. Because he doesn't give a fuck about that boyfriend and then like she goes to start to, she's like okay and then she goes to her bedroom to put it on he goes hey hey, hey. i want to watch you put it on and then she starts undressing and she goes to take off her bra and he says stop take off your socks <laughs> so she so she takes off her socks first and then he turns around and says, now take off your brassiere. And it's he, like he's like imagining it. Like he's already just like in his mind, just like, yeah, now, now take off your brassiere. Yeah. And he's taken he's taken everything out of his pockets, like his handcuffs, his gun, his, yeah, his badge, his badge, all this yeah. stuff. He's like, all right, now take off your panties. Yeah. Now, now come here. Come here right behind me. That's it. Put... <laughs> <laughs> put put your hand inside my pants. So yeah, like she was hugging him first, and then he like starts to unbuckle his shit. So put your hand in there. He's like, now do you feel that? And she's like, uh huh. And he says, Dude, how old are you now? Bro. And she says, twelve. And he goes, yeah. So am I, bro, bro, <laughs> dude. Dude, and, and, like, this is where I have. This is where we have to get into like a little debate. But, but, but let's, let's, okay, let's just, yeah, that's what he goes. Your, so your your boyfriend, and she says, Marshall. He was fat. And he's like, yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. He loved me with pure love. It was our secret. And like, she, she hands and pants, like, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, now switch with me. You get in the front. And then he fucks a 12-year-old girl. D- D- Matthew McConaughey fucks a 12-year-old in this movie. All right, so this is the debate. Is she actually 12 in this movie? Like, like not in real life. Obviously, that, this girl's not 12. Absolutely, already... that character is supposed to be 12. Because it seems like she's even they, more grown than, obviously, more grown than a 12-year-old. Would, they would not have treated her like a 12-year-old had her say she was 12 if she was not supposed to be 12 in this movie. So it was hard for me to believe. Like, there, definitely I thought that. But there was well, hard for me. because she's 23 and she, she has a fucking 23-year-old's body. No, yeah. So She uh, has a 12-year-old's face and personality. Well, but, come on. This, this movie's so weird that, like, my brain went, okay, maybe she thinks she's still 12. You're overthinking this. You are way overthinking this. Like, maybe she has trauma from when she was 12 where she f- she's just stuck as a 12-year-old. I don't know. You're, you're she doesn't look like a 12-year-old. Overthinking it. I, I Overthinking guess. it. She's, I guess. She's a 12-year-old that fucked Matthew McConaughey. That's so fucked. That makes this movie so much more. And he's 12, he's 12 too. Bro. Oh, my God. So this is... Uh, I, bro, so... Because, like, here's the thing. If she's going to have trauma... And think she's a 12-year-old and all that stuff. It needs to be said in the movie. It can't be Braden playing 3D chess and coming up with that part of it. She is she is 12 in this movie. I just found it so fucked that I'm like, man. Yeah. Oh, no. Dude. I said I, in the beginning, I am uncomfortable every single time these two are in a scene together. Yeah, it's fucked. It is weird. During this scene, I said, fuck, man, I picked this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this is so fucking fucked up, and I picked it. Yeah. 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 It is fucking <laughs> bizarre. McConaughey fucked a 12-year-old while she t- 
told him about her fat fucking boyfriend named Marshall in the third grade. Oh, my God. It's so fucking weird, dude. Yeah. Uh, Johnny True Love, like, pulled up outside the trailer and watched the light turn off in the trailer. You know what this kind of reminds me of? And this is kind of fucked to say, but... Your uncle? Yeah, it's fucked <laughs> like that. <laughs> no, uh, dude, so... Dude, I love just... just I was like, what's the connection in the movie? And you were like, well, uncle. You, my uncle. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> so I, was like, I was like, his whole story was your fucking uncle? He's a great guy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... I, my mom sends me this the other day about, like... This is, like, on Instagram about how this actress, Brooke Shields, was... it. This is why I am reminded of it, is because back in the day, she did a movie, apparently, where she was underage in real life and she was getting like raped or like fucked by someone that's way older and then she had a basically state but was it raped or fucked i didn't see the movie but so that that's because that's a big difference no it's, it, then it was rape because in the movie like you can, it, could, she's underage yeah and, and i think well like but you can do a movie where you should i mean there shouldn't well, be what penetration would you call this? there shouldn't be so i'm just saying like you can do in a movie where, like, non-consensually an underage actress gets raped. It's not great. No, no, yeah, but yeah. But that, yeah. that happens. So, but, you but, can't show in a movie where, like, Brooke Shields is 13 in real life. And that, she, that, that's and what she, I'm getting to. And she consensually has sex with an adult. So Because that then makes 13-year-olds think... 100%. I agree oh, with you. I agree with you. Brooke but Shields is it. This is what we're getting to. So there was, there was, like, dilemma over it because everyone thought it was actually her. So she had to go out on the record and state that they had a fill-in for her sex scene because she was actually underage. But this is where it gets worse. How old was the fill-in? I think she was like probably okay, 20, okay. 23 okay. or something like that too. But but um, this is where it gets fucked. Like a couple months before that or something like that, Brooke Shields, somehow her mom allowed her to do a Playboy shoot. And I kid you not, bro. I didn't believe it because my mom sent me this thing on Instagram that's like, oh, Playboy is fucked up, this and that. They did um, child pornography with Brooke Shields. And I was like, no, that's fucked up. Yeah, you're going to do it. This is fucked. I went. I was like, there's no way this is real. Looked up Brooke Shields Playboy. Click first link on Google. You want to know what it shows? Child pornography. And I kid you not. I started typing it, but I don't want to see it. No, you don't. So, yeah. so please don't do it. Because yeah, I was jaw dropped and I was I was appalled. Yeah. I started it's looking. Fucked. I'm like, oh, is this real? And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna see a no, yeah, I'm gonna see a naked child. I didn't Let's look not. Up, do I it. didn't look up like naked photos or anything. I looked up to try and like read about the story to see if it was true. First link on Google immediately. Yeah, <laughs> David. So I like, oh, this is so fucking hot. But it's somewhat, you know is uh similar to when when they talk about the scenes but yeah fucked up man fuck you playboy i can't believe it, bro it's fucked all right now back to the movie since that was like a really daunting weird perspective story but don't look it up guys i'm telling you how so, old was she was 10 years old Brooke, she, she was up. 10 years old when they put in public oh, her gosh, naked she, all over the country all over the world bro like you go fucking find the magazine bro where she's oh dude it's it's a it's like literally appalling, bro. And this is a uh, yep, <laughs> ten year old. Uh, yeah. Gross was the photographer of the controversial set of nude images taken in 1975 of a then ten year old Brooke Shields with the consent of her mother, uh, Terry Shields, for the Playboy publication <laughs> Sugar and Spice. So so you and show- everything nice. Oh my god, it gets me pissed off. So the image portrays Shields nude. Standing and sitting in a bathtub, wearing makeup, and covered in oil. It's so fucked up, bro. <laughs> oh, it's so fucking crazy. So, so David, there's another thing I forgot to say, and I didn't want to say were it. They, were they classy? Were they, like, artsy, and you were like, no, oh, you know, it was, those, it was were they sexual. tasteful? You no, know? it was sexual. Was it tasteful? It was, it was sexual. It was you, the, didn't, you didn't find it David, tasteful? David, please, bro. The, the, honestly. No, 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 no. Fuck you with the David, please. You can't bring this up. No, I know, and, and you not joke about it for and sure. Me, and me saying, "Was it tasteful?" That's the, <laughs> that's the worst that's happening. No, yeah, it's let's just, roll with it. It's so, it's so, it's so you know, appalling, dude, bro. Dude, dude, here's the thing. Here's the thing. When I say, "Is it tasteful?" Your response needs to be, "Yeah, kind of." <laughs> like, like that's that's what that fucking needs to be. So this like, is yeah, it was pretty tasteful. So remember when I was talking about the pea girl? Yeah. 
Remember when I was like, oh, she was, was, in the, she, was she, she was, also was she also ten? No. So remember when I was like, oh, there, there was a she was in the backyard and we we're talking about the videos that they take and there was no care. My whole point was hippies that take videos that they don't care about the way that yeah, it's perceived I don't care public. about their trauma. They need to worry about my opinion of them. So this is what, I, what you said. This is what I was really Psycho. getting to, and I never said it because I didn't even want to say it. Her friend that took the video of them in the backyard, I clicked on hers page to see like, oh, what's this girl about? All over this fucking girl's page was her son naked, like naked. And I, oh, I'm like, dude, it's not about how, how old. Like, I don't know, bro. Like one, two years old, maybe three. I don't like probably in between. Like it was like a shit ton of photos, bro. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, and I'm yeah, like, yeah, dude, yeah. this pisses me off. Cause I'm like, bro, it's not about your free expression. It's about the fucking pervert. Who's going to take that photo and do whatever he wants with it, bro. Like it's about him. Yeah. It's about me. My anger. <laughs> it's <laughs> selfish, but yeah, I, that's what I was like trying to get to. And I'm like, oh man, I'm kind of dying on this hill that I didn't want to die on about her tits. Yeah. But, but here's <laughs> the thing. Like th- that was like, like way you, worse. You did it wrong. Yeah. You did it wrong because you're you're correct. I haven't seen the pictures. No, yeah. If there's tons of pictures yeah. of her naked child on yeah. there, yeah, that's yeah. not that's not, not great. It's not. It's not great. There's weirdos going on and jacking off to their no, her fucking yeah, son. Like it's for not, sure, for sure. Instead, you were like, "What's she doing with the fucking tits out yeah, in Fred's that's backyard?" Shit, and that's what I'm like, and oh, I was should have said it. And I was <laughs> like, "All right, man. Like, it's it's weird that you're picking this." <laughs> Like in the back of my mind, I'm like, David's so goddamn right right now. Like, I, I want to say what I want to say, but I'm like, it's yeah. so daunting. You, you, it's you like, too half assed it. I you, did. You needed yes. to go all the way in. And you know what? This episode, I'm going all the way the there fuck in. He's, all the secrets he's, are exposed. <laughs> <laughs> he's blowing up family secrets. <laughs> Talking about child pornography. I hope you guys are appreciative. I'm giving you all the treats. I'm laying it all out today. This is why God. I got trust issues, right? This is great. <laughs> this is brain. Brain's going all in. Yeah. This movie brought it out of me, man. Matthew McConaughey <laughs> brought it out of me. I'm he, glad I picked it now. He fucked this fucking 10-year-old, 12-year-old <laughs> girl, and God, bro. Now I'm just And tro- you tried to be like, well, maybe she isn't 12. <laughs> well, maybe this just, you know. Maybe she's an adult, and she just thinks she's 12. And like, maybe she was role-playing, and she thought that's what he wanted. You think you're fucking psycho, man. <laughs> Like making excuses, you know, you know like maybe it. maybe Matthew wouldn't have done that. He wouldn't do something like that, would he? Maybe Matthew's watching. He's like, "Oh, that's what they meant." I actually thought I was <laughs> having sex with a girl who thought she was twelve. I thought the actress was twelve. <laughs> oh, that's Matthew's way like, dark. I thought I was just fucking a twelve-year-old. <laughs> She's twenty-three at that time. <laughs> that's fucking bullshit, man. Oh my god, he's calling his agent. He's like, "I need you to scrub Killer Joe from everything." Thought I was fucking a twelve-year-old, not. Not some 23-year-old pretending to be 12. And they kept his name in Interstellar. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking rapes a 12-year-old. And then they keep his name. Same actor. Dude, this is wild. Oh, so great. It's so, so fucked. So Johnny True Love, he's, he's betting on horses at like a strip mall, like one of those places where they got the screens up and you're this watching it. me off. I'm like, come on, bro. And now he's like a... He bets $1,000 on the horse. I guess he got $1,000 somehow. Just, that's exactly what I thought. And he lost it. And then he walks out, and two leather guys and motorcycles pull up. And they're super and there's, cool. There's a guy in a truck, and they're like, hey, we want our money, man. What you doing? You've been, you've been making excuses for weeks now. And he's like, all right, here's the thing. And then he takes off running. And they I'm chase him. I'm going to get him. it by uh, motherfucking. Just yeah, takes off. he runs. They, they follow him on motorcycles. Here's, here's my issue here. He loses them. He loses them in an abandoned warehouse and then keeps running and gets caught. He could have just stayed put so yeah, many times. He could have stayed in the driving. warehouse. They never would have found him. Yeah, that pissed me off. Instead, he gets caught. And, but but uh, the way he gets caught, once again, he was about to not get caught. And he's around the corner. And they're like, hmm. Maybe oh, no, they, they were creeping up. They, they were going to catch yeah. him if he didn't run. And then he goes, <clears throat> coughs really loud. And they're like, oh, obviously he's right fucking yeah. there. And they, they circle him and they knock him down. And then the boss gets out of the truck. I love the boss. Boss is great. I love this. He, he asks Shiny True Love how he's doing. And Johnny Shulman's like, yeah, I'm doing all right. How about you? His name's uh, his name is fucking Digger. Digger, yeah, Digger, Digger, Digger Soames. Yeah, is his name. It's a cool name. He goes, how you doing, Digger? He goes, eh, fair to middling. Yeah, my my blood pressure's acting up. Johnny was like, ah, oh, you take medic- medicine for that? He's like, yeah, all that shit. No salt, no stress. But you know, Amy keeps making her fried chicken, and you know, I can't say no to that. Giant was like, oh, how is Amy? Like they're having like a fucking such a friendly conversation. Dude, it's, it's, He's like, how is Amy? He's like. 
eh, she's not doing great at the moment. You know, we had to put our dog to sleep last week. He's like, oh, that's too bad. Man. And he's like, yeah. You know, you missed the... We didn't see you at the party. He's like, yeah, I'm sorry I missed your birthday. He's like, well, I'm glad you missed my birthday, but <laughs> I wish you would have been at that party, you know? How many... Q, man, how many people we have over there? He's like, oh, hundreds. He's like, nah, it wasn't hundreds. He's like, at least 150. He's like, really? No shit. He's like, man, yeah, he's like, He's like, it was great and a hell of a party. We had barbecue and, uh, oh, it's G-Man, not Q-Man. Yeah, yeah G-Man. G- G-Man here even got on the accordion. It was crazy. <laughs> and he's like, wow, and who's that girl? Um, Arlene, that Arlene girl that's always following you around. He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, you better watch out for her. She might be too much woman for you. And Johnny Trulo goes, yeah, she keeps eating that barbecue. She's going to be too much woman to fit through the door. And he goes, <laughs> oh, now you always do make me laugh. <laughs> Now, here's the thing. I'm going to have the boys here kick the shit out of you a little bit. Then you're going to get me my money in a few days, or I'm going to wrap you up in electrician tape. And I'm going to dig you, or I'm going to bury you in a coffin about 10 feet deep, all right? And he's like, all right, yeah. He's yeah. fair. Yeah. He's fair. He's like, all right, now, I'll tell him you were asking about her. And then he winks, and he starts to walk away and gets in the truck and goes, I think that'll make her smile. And he closes the door, and G-Man walks up and goes, he really does like you, kid. And then, and then they just beat the fuck out of him. Yeah. Oh, and, like, I thought, I thought like, from the first punch, I'm like, oh, okay, they're just going to rough him up a bit. And then he gets knocked down, I'm like, okay, they're roughing him up a little bit more than a bit. And then they just start going, just, just keep hitting him in the same fucking they're, spot right they're in the face. kicking him in the face repeatedly. Yeah. His and face it, is a fucking nightmare. And there was a point where I was like, oh, I totally thought they were going to stop by now. <laughs> when, when they were beating the shit out. I was like, oh, I, I totally thought we were going to be on the next scene at this point. They are beating the fuck for, out of for him. For like 20 seconds. But they were so kicking nice him. about it from yeah. when they started. I was like thinking, okay, yeah, he's yeah. going to end up with like some bruises. Yeah, like they got to rough him up, send a yeah. message. But, you know. but now he can barely hear or see. Like his eyes are swollen shut. He's blood everywhere. <laughs> Looks like his hand was fucking missing fingers. I mean, no, so but it was like wrapped up. They, or they do fuck his hands up. Yeah, he uh, he gets home. It's pouring. The dog's still out in the rain. This is the best. And he like gets in, and the second he gets in the door, a naked Matthew McConaughey tackles him and is on top of him, pointing a gun in his face, like balls on his chest. Yeah, yeah, like, like gun in his fucking face, and he's like, "All right." That's Emil Hirsch's like. That's that's the epitome of his career right there. Like, there's no getting better than that, other than like maybe killing someone in Alpha Dog. Y- you don't think Matthew McConaughey how, with his balls how on your fu- chest, dude, dude? I need you to stop. I want to punch you in the face right now. Every scene in Alpha Dog was the epitome. Getting to play Johnny True Love was the epitome of his fucking career. Not. Matthew. Shut the fuck up right now, you piece of shit. He was the greatest character in the history of film. And you're going to fucking disrespect him like that? You're going to sit here and be like, oh, that one scene in that shitty movie where McConaughey was naked on him. That was the best part of his career. He played Johnny fucking True Love. He said, Frankie, put your boy in check. <laughs> Tell him what fucking time it is. Jail fucked, fucko. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You you made you coming in here. You coming in here trying to n word talk me? (laughs) Give me my fucking money. You're right. Greatest character. I said all queers are death, motherfucker. Johnny True Love. What's the line? You shut your fucking mouth. What's the line right when he throws him through the fucking table? He said, "Give me my fucking money." Money. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and he fucking belt throws him through a glass table. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Well, any other good, act, any other actor, sure. Well, at least it was a good day for him. I mean, we can at least say that. Sure. Sure, but don't go top shelf. <laughs> don't disrespect the fuck, dude. You disrespect Johnny True Love. You're disrespecting the Five Six Kings. That's, that's you right. realize that. Yeah. You understand that, and yet you chose to fucking do it. I just got fuck people. you. All right. Fuck, damn. So Jack, Danny Rayburn, and Sharla come out, and they, they come running out, and Johnny Trulob's explaining, and he's like, they beat the fuck out of me, I gotta get him the money. Matthew McConaughey casually walks back to Dottie's room and puts his pants on, and he says, excuse me, to Sharla as he walks by him. 
Yeah, Char- 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 Charla Char- wants that. Charla grabs some beers and a wet rag for Dottie to take care of Johnny True Love. Mm-hmm. And Charla's like, all right, Jack Danny Rayburn, let's go back to bed. And Jack Danny Rayburn's like, all right, well, we're going to we're gonna hit the sack uh, and do that. And then Matthew McConaughey goes, Dottie, let's go. And Dottie's like, all right, we're going to go to bed. And then that scene ends. Yeah. He basically like, just, I guess, sleeps on the floor, bloody I or mean, something. He comes in just bloodied and beaten. Everyone His gives dad and stepmom like are going to go fuck. Dottie's going to go get fucked by an adult, by a 40-year-old man. It's insane. Jesus. We're now at an abandoned roller coaster where Johnny True Love is meeting with Matthew McConaughey. He wants to know the progress. And Matthew McConaughey says he's going to kill her tonight. And Johnny True Love's like, all right, great. So then... You're, 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 we're done after this. He said, well, no, Dottie's my retainer. I'm going to keep fucking your 12 year old sister until I get paid. And, and Johnny Trill is like, I, I don't like no. that. And he's yeah. like, well, I don't care if you like it. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. He's, he's like, like, he's like, look, you say the word and I won't do it. And you'll never see me again. He's like, but she's my retainer for the murder. And. I'm going to keep my retainer until I get the rest of my money. And then he's like, China Trill's like, I, I don't know about this. And he's like, uh, Matthew McConaughey's like, so who do you owe the money to? And he's like, it doesn't matter. And then he goes, Digger Soames? And he's like, how the fuck do you know that? He's like, yeah. Whatever he said he's going to do to you, he'll do it. And China Trill goes, hey, aren't you a detective? Aren't you <laughs> supposed to arrest murderers? And there's just silent for a second. He just looks at him confused and goes, I like Digger. <laughs> I wish you would have been like, I went to this party he had a couple weeks ago. There must have been 200 people there. It was crazy. <laughs> G-Man was playing the accordion. It was fucking wild. Great barbecue. Yeah. There was this girl Arlene there. Like, I wish he would have just dove into the party. Yeah. He didn't. Yeah, it would have been funny. Uh, Johnny True Love tells him, he's like, all right, still, still do it. He's like, all right. We now, we're at the trailer, and the phone rings in the trailer, but Dottie won't answer it. We see Matthew McConaughey at the station now. We see him dressed as, like, a normal person. And then he goes to his locker and dresses as a cowboy and gets his gun to go do cowboy shit. Goddamn right. And he walks out. As he gets out of the station, Johnny True Love's waiting for him. He's like, oh, thank God. I thought I was going to miss you. Look, man, I, I thought it through, and I, we just can't do this. You know, don't don't kill her, and I, I can't have you around my sister anymore. And this is insane because this is in the police parking lot where like, all like, right outside the door. Like, there's cops walking from their cars like into the police station, and he's like saying this, like, yeah. He's and like, Matthew McConaughey just acting it. super cool, just like walking into the car, not saying he just walk, a doesn't, word. doesn't say a word. Yeah, and he's he's like, you know, just you can't do it, and you you can't have Dottie. And then Matthew's and like, they get to his car. All right, get in. <laughs> He's like, all right. The car ride. Johnny True Love does not shut the fuck up this yeah. entire car ride. He's talking about the farm. We learned about the farm. It was a rabbit farm, and the rabbits are fucking, and a skunk must have got in and killed some of them. And you know rabbits scream. Rabbits scream real loud. And I was like, man, I don't know how to run a fucking farm. Why don't I sell dope? I know that way more than farm stuff. So I started selling dope, and then my mom stole the two ounces of Coke, and I owe Digger all that money from it and all that shit. Like, he just does not stop fucking talking yeah and then he just goes but like you gotta get out joe you gotta you gotta leave my sister and they pull up you gotta you gotta leave my sister forever you gotta go and then they pull up there in front of a barbecue joint and very casually so, yeah johnny Trill's like what the fuck are we doing here he's like get out <laughs> they get out they go to the trunk and they open it and there's Dead mama. Yeah. His mom's just dead in his trunk. He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Which is funny. He already did it. Yeah. And this is the only time we see the mom. It's yeah. the only time we see the mom, and it's of her dead fucking corpse face. Which is, you know what? Good. Why pay an actress to play the mom? Yeah. It wouldn't have added anything. Yeah. It wouldn't have made this movie good. Yeah, but it's funny because she is like almost one of the main characters, and she doesn't say a word. Not, nor even... Not a one. Yeah. To barely ever seen yeah. they put her her the gold cadillacs right there they put her in the driver's seat mcconaughey like dabs some booze around her mouth and he lights a joint and he's smoking it and like blowing 
the smoke on her because I'm sure she'll have drug in, in her system mm. and he wants her to smell like she was drinking and drugging in the car. Mm. And then he cuts the gas line and like has like a line of gas going away from the car and he lights that. And then him and Johnny True Love get in the car and start driving away. And Johnny True Love watches as the car catches fire and blows up. I guess that's the way to do it, people. And we hear Dottie laugh. Like, while it was nice, they're in the car driving away, and we hear Dottie laughing. Cute little transition. And then it cuts into the next scene where her and Johnny True Love are at a diner, and she's watching the Coyote and the Roadrunner on the TV in the diner, and she's laughing hysterically. She's loving it. Yeah. Fucking loving it. Yeah. Johnny True Love gets up and turns it off. She goes, hey, I was watching that. I wanted to see what happens. And he goes, it never catches the fucking bird. All right? The bird never gets caught. <laughs> Every episode ends the same. It gets away. <laughs> Which is true. Yeah. He then is sitting with her and, like, like, yeah, he's t- like touching her knee and stuff. And you're like, all right, all right. It's kind of weird. Touching her knee and he's like, hey, hey. He says, I, I, you know, I'm sorry. Like, had I known things were going to go this way, you know, I, I would have never done this. Or I might have done things differently. Might have done things differently. And she goes, no. Just like that. <laughs> that is all she says. She says, no. Because, you know, every line in this fucking movie is just weird. <laughs> and, like, well, I took it as no, like, I'm cool with the way things have been going. That's how yeah, I took yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like, but I think still kind of weird. Like, she's like, no, like, I, I wouldn't have wanted any different. Which, yeah, it's, it's not okay. No, it's weird, <laughs> for sure. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's weird. Sad. She's 12. Been sad by yeah. her brother. Yeah, and trying Matthew to see, McConaughey. And, yeah, and, Matthew, and I, trying wouldn't, to see, I wouldn't want things any different. Her mom made her not be for a little while, and then she was. I wouldn't want anything different. Yeah, that's fucking insane. We're in the insurance place, and oh, so Jack Denny Rayburn, I haven't said this, he wears a trucker hat every scene. Yeah. He is now wearing a suit that matches the trucker hat. It's like a like a brownish suit, brownish trucker hat. And his wife is there and like tries to like dust something off his suit. Yeah, and just rips his left sleeve. So yeah. now his left yeah. sleeve just like falls down. And he's like, ah, uh, and that's exactly when the guy walks in. Yeah, and he, he, yeah, it's not important what the guy says there. I forget yeah. what he says, but wasn't important. We see them walk out of the insurance thing, and then we're back inside the diner. And Dottie asks Johnny True Love, she's like, "Is there gonna be a trial? I've never been to a trial." Like she's just excited. She's like, "That'll be cool." And he goes, "No, nah, Joe knows what he's doing. It's fucking, they they couldn't even do an autopsy. Did you see Mom's car in the paper?" And I'm like, dude, you guys are literally in a public place around people eating very close to you. Yeah. And you're literally talking about... That's Dallas for you, baby. Yeah, maybe. That's yeah. fucking Dallas. He's like, there's, there's nothing left for them to even look at. Right. Yeah. When you said Dallas, that fucking thunder's kicking in. There we go. That's like, some just, Dallas shit. Yeah, don't you talk about Dallas like that. Charla walks in the diner and asks Shawnee True Love how it went. And she's clearly unhappy. She says, let's just go. And then he follows. And he's like, what's going on? He follows. And he's like, what's going on, guys? Like... How'd it go? What's going on? And the dad is pissed, and she's like, I don't want, I don't want to talk in front of Dottie. And Charles like, quit making a scene. And, like, Dottie knows what the fuck's going on. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, but not in front of Dottie. Not in front of Dottie. So they make him talk, and he, he goes, Giant True Love's like, you know, how'd you hear about her insurance policy? He's like, Rex told me. He's like, when did he tell you? He's like, I told you Rex told me. He's like, no, when did he tell you? He's like, a couple weeks ago after me and Mama got in the fight. He's like, fucking asshole and he's like what is it he goes Dottie isn't the beneficiary he nailed the word this time he fucking nailed it beneficiary he goes Rex is and Giant Shrew was like no no why, why the fuck would Rex lie to me it's not like he would know what I was gonna do and he goes how'd you hear about Killer Joe dad all of a sudden Jack Daddy Rayburn is fucking putting everything together he's like how'd you hear about Killer Joe and Johnny like has like a oh I'm a fucking moron moment yeah he's like rex fucking rex told me yeah. about killer joe and what's funny is like yeah the father starts piecing all this shit together like as if he's smart all of a sudden i kind of wish they would have showed well yeah i wish they would have showed something more of like him connecting these dots because i felt like his character up to that point was too stupid yeah, but but yeah, I get what you're saying, yeah, they needed to transition it, and his character maybe that should have been the other guy. And, it, and it's not like after the scene, his character is super smart. No, no, not yeah, at like, all. Like this is this is the only scene where you're like, oh, this guy fucking gets it. Every what other I, scene, he's a child. 
what I wish they would have done is they would have soaked up that scene with the guy who's supposed to be explaining the beneficiary. Like, him being like, wait, you're telling me? But but I... And, like, taking I, him, I, like, a second to get I it. I disagree with that, though. Yeah? I like us finding out at the same time Johnny True Love does. That makes sense, too. Yeah. yeah. More than I would have liked but you them of... giving us a reason. Yeah, like, yeah, like it, makes it makes no sense yeah, that the yeah. dad would do it, but... But I would prefer it be done this way. I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, there's the no other way then. to kind of do it properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense. So if we found out in there, then it's just like, oh, okay, can't, away from can't wait to see Johnny find out. Like, yeah, that's it's it not takes as away fun. from that scene. Yeah, Jack, Jack, Danny Rayburn then tells Johnny True Love, he's like, you better figure out a way to pay Matthew McConaughey and Digger Soames. And then the Charlotte's like, come on, guys, we gotta go. And he's like, we're going. He's like, funerals in a half hour. We gotta go. And Johnny True Love's like, I'm not fucking going with you guys. And then Dottie, Dottie's like, I'm gonna stay with, I'm gonna stay with Johnny True Love. So they, those two leave for the funeral together. Donnie and Johnny True Love. Oh, oh. no! Before, as uh, Dad's getting in, he says, Dottie says, Matthew McConaughey's coming back, right? Johnny True Love and Jack Danny Rayburn both snicker and say, Yeah, he's coming back, all right. <laughs> so, yeah. Fucking horrible. She is 12, and they're laughing about the fact, like, oh, yeah, he's coming back. He's not done with you. He hasn't been paid. You're still his property. To the, to this writer or writers are, are like, wow. So Dottie is staying with Johnny True Love. Jack Danny Rayburn says, hey, Johnny True Love, why don't you do us all a big favor and go kill yourself? And it wasn't done like anger. Like, he says in Johnny True Love's like, yeah, yeah, fuck you, man. Yeah, fuck you. Got, a, got an itchy nose. Oh, yeah. Itch that. Oh, oh my God. Good. There's nothing better than itching a nose. Oh, nothing better. Especially when it's itchy. Except fucking a 12-year-old. That's the only thing better than itching a nose. No, yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that what you want? There we go. There we go. <laughs> tasteful. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pretty tasteful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're right. God damn. So Johnny True Love and Dottie are walking on the, the railroad tracks. And Dottie reminds Johnny. I, I didn't get this. Yeah, like did he molest her here too? She reminds Johnny True Love of when she was a kid, and he'd come in and put on these shows. You called it the greatest show on earth, and you'd put a pair of sunglasses on one knee and a hat on the other knee, and you'd put on a little show. I don't understand what was happening. I'm. I don't know. Now you're making me think fucked up things. I. Well, I'm making you think not, fucked up not things. You, but like, I I wrote this fucking movie <laughs> no, where McConaughey's <laughs> fucking a twelve year old. I'm saying that you're implying like, oh, I think she might have got raped here too. Now I'm thinking like, man, maybe this show with the knees was to try and like open up to like the genitalia area. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he was grooming her. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying with like this show. Yeah, whoa, <sighs> yeah, that's probably it, dude. There we go. You, wow. Because 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 if you're gonna. Start having sex with your little sister. You got to groom her first. Jesus Christ. I thought you were going to say why just, she ran away. You can't just go right into it. You got to build to it. You can't just go, hey, Dottie, you want to fuck? You got to put on the greatest show on earth. Make her bring something to the table. You know, make her intrigued. And then you say, you know, Dottie, your mouth is missing something. What's her mouth missing, Brad? What's her mouth missing? Say the correct answer. I was going to say, no, yeah, you're right. What's her mouth missing? Say it. Say it. What? What is her mouth missing? If he's grooming her, you know you know the answer. Just say it. Penis. Yeah! <laughs> ah, it hurts! <laughs> My eyes hurt! <laughs> you gotta groom him. Johnny True Love gets that. Now I know her. Now I know. Actually, that's what I should have said when I was talking about the fucking Brooke Shield shit. Now I understand why she says, your eyes hurt. Because my eyes fucking hurt. There you go. Yeah. Wow. Johnny True Love wants her to go with him to Mexico. No. Further. Peru. He's like, we'll drive there. And she's like, I have to see Joe first. He's Wait, like, no, no, fuck that. You can't see Joe. Where's Peru? Peru. South America, he says. No, yeah, but like compared to Mexico, like. It's for, I mean, they're in Dallas. Mexico is... No, I know. Not far Me from... Mexico, like, I, I, my guess, I, I could That's be, what I'm saying. I could I be way where... off. You could get to Mexico from Dallas quicker than you could get to Georgia from here. 
Absolutely. But South yeah. America is pretty long. So I'm saying like Mexico to Peru might be very far. Yeah, that's what he's saying. He wants to go further. Uh, yeah, he, okay. wants, he wants to be further away. Yeah, it just seems like, depending on how far that is, it seems like it could be a stretch. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, Johnny True Love will make it happen. Dude, where, yeah, Johnny right. True Love, where did he... He was in Argentina, I think, when he got arrested. Oh, you're fucking right. Or is he, yeah. And he had blonde hair. He's, he's familiar with South America. That, uh, damn. Yeah. Oh, he, uh, damn. yeah, wants to go to Peru, and she's like, no, he's like, I gotta see Joe first. He's like, no, fuck that, we gotta go. We gotta go right now. And she's like, no, you're gonna go alone then, because I need to see Joe. And she starts to run off. Which is why I thought you were gonna say that because... She she runs off right now, which obviously means that instead of something I said that was way funnier. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Because of grooming, you know the whole yeah. grooming thing. Yeah. Because yeah. you gotta groom them. <laughs> Johnny True Love. He then like he's in a car and he pulls up and he gets her to get in by saying they'll go to the funeral and she can see Joe before they go. And then she gets in and he's telling her she's in the back seat. He's like, now you can't tell Joe or. Uh, Dad and Char, Jack, Danny Rayburn, and Charla that we're going to Peru. All right, it's got to be our secret. And he's like, "You, you if you, you like, you want to go? You're, you excited?" She's like, "I'm always excited." You know, this is the only time in the film where I feel like someone's really talking to her like a twelve year old. Yeah. And now that you say that and everything, I'm like viewing this scene differently. I mean, he wanted to fuck his twelve-year-old sister. Well, but like talking Peru to her forever. like, but like talking to her like she's twelve. Dude, but like, what could be better? <laughs> Forever, Damn. he gets to fuck. I mean, until she gets like, once she's like seventeen, and then he doesn't want to fuck her anymore, and he's got to go find someone else. No, no, yeah, but he's got right. five good years in Peru. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it's like my soul like fucking hurts every time I say that line. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah, pretty tasteful. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts. So Johnny True Love, he's telling that he's like, I think we could pull this off, and she says. Yeah, unless somebody makes me mad. Like, what? What? <laughs> Who the fuck did that come from? <laughs> I'm like, has this been a thing? Did, they're at the funeral. She said this before. They're at the funeral, and Rex didn't even fucking bother showing up. Which is hilarious. The way the father's like, God, ah, the fucking yeah, Rex, Rex didn't, even... didn't even fucking get all the money, and doesn't even fucking show up. <laughs> yeah, the he's so pissed off, bro. He's so jealous. Uh, oh during the God. funeral, Johnny True Love starts crying and has to walk away. Matthew McConaughey's sitting in his car at the funeral, watching and flicking his lighter. Uh, Johnny True Love drops Dottie off at the trailer park, and the dog doesn't bark. Mm. Again, he drops Dottie off. Dog doesn't bark at her. Huh. Matthew McConaughey pulls Rex over, and we don't see Rex's face. We just see he's driving like a fucking Camaro. Yeah, and he gets pulled over. And Johnny True Love buys a gun from a black guy because only black guys sell guns. All right. Yeah, that's what this. All right, is. whoever whoever fucking wrote and directed this movie, I hope, I hope it's said in the script that he buys a gun from a black guy. I they're, would, they're just like any black guy. Just find one. I would that's love who's it buy. if cancel culture canceled this movie specifically because of that, but I, nothing else. I, me too. Me too. That's what I. <laughs> And guys, we're about to get into the best the best scene in any movie ever. But that is going to take a quick piss first. Yeah. Couple we've had a few breaks in this one. You're you're going to need to take a bathroom break before this scene. Yeah. I I got to compose myself and get ready and we'll be right back. So, we are back. I was about to just go into the scene, but I realized you guys don't know we're back unless we say we're back. We're back. And we're back. Woo. So, Best scene in any movie. It is very long. This is it is bananas. Luckily, I got it right. I asked, yeah, yeah. This <laughs> brain. I, I texted him. He's like, obviously, this. I asked him. I said, would you be willing to play the role of Sharla and reenact this with me? And he said, dude, fuck no. <laughs> I knew you were gonna ask me this while I was watching this scene. I was like, David's gonna ask me to fucking do this. Like, <laughs> the, what the mind. fuck does he think of me? <laughs> that I would be willing to do it. this. Oh my and god! And I, I said, like, odds are he's gonna say no. But like, maybe I catch him on a day where he's like, oh yeah, it'll be great because it would be great podcasting. It oh, would be, oh, it'd be amazing to do it. I get that you said no, and I don't blame you. You know, it would have been better. I want you guys to listen to this scene and let us know 
if you'd be willing to do it. So, please. Yo, if you're, like, willing to do it, let us know. Or just send us. You doing it. Videos of you <laughs> doing this. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jack, Danny, Rayburn, and Sharla get home, and they yell out that they stopped at K-Fry-C. Not KFC. K-Fry-C. K- K-Fry-C. <laughs> Matthew- <laughs> lazy writing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew, Matthew McConaughey walks out of Dottie's room, says Dottie's asleep and Chris isn't here. They're too cool about him being there. He walks out like he's not wearing a shirt. Yeah. And they're like, oh, hey. Hey, Matthew McConaughey. You want some uh, K-Fry C? Yeah. He's like, oh, I'd love some. Weird. <laughs> like He's like getting dressed and putting stuff on. I'm like, how many days has he been and living here now? He says, yeah. he says he'll, take, uh, he'll take a leg and he'd love a beer. And they, they hook him up, and he, as he's getting dressed, Charlotte comes and, like, holding it. He's like, I put it on the table, please. She puts it down on the table. Sharla and Jack Danny Rayburn are eating at the table. And Sharla brings up the insurance. And Jack Danny Rayburn's like, the fuck are you doing? And she's like, he, I'm sure he already knows. He's like, yeah, I heard about the money. And she's like, and, and Jack Danny Rayburn's like, I don't even know what to say, you know? And she's like, well, it's not your fault. It's fucking Johnny True Love's fault. I could have told you he was going to fuck it up. Matthew McConaughey goes, why didn't you? And she goes, huh? He goes, why didn't you tell us he was going to fuck it up? And Jack Danny Raymond's like, it's just an expression. Matthew McConaughey goes, huh? Huh? He goes, it's, uh, it's an expression, you yeah? know? He goes, what is? Like, her saying that he would have known that she could have told us that he would have fucked it up. It's an expression, a manner of speaking. Matthew McConaughey goes, oh, I've never heard that. <laughs> I've never heard that. And <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> and Charlotte goes, yeah, John Trill, he's just no good. You know, you can't trust him. And Matthew McConaughey casually grabs Jack Danny Rayburn's hat and jacket and puts it in another room. I didn't get why yeah. he did it or if there was symbolism I was supposed I to like, pick on. I like almost forgot about it until you said it. Yeah. Does it? And then Charlotte starts talking about. He's like, "Yeah, how how stupid do you have to be to let a fucking idiot like Rex take advantage of you?" And Matthew McConaughey comes out and goes, "Why don't you tell me about Rex?" And she's like, "Huh?" He's like, "Tell me about Rex. I want you to tell me about Rex." And she doesn't understand. So Matthew McConaughey goes, "Is and I want you to start laughing when Jack Danny Rayburn starts laughing." Okay. 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 He goes, "Is he tall? Is he fat? Is he Chinese?" <laughs> Where does he work? How old is he? Do you keep laughing? Do his ears hang low? Is he unlike other men? Tell me about Rex. And Jack Lady Rayburn, from Chinese until the end of Tell Me About Rex, he does not stop laughing. It's like it's like when the the monster truck lost its tire yeah. and they didn't have a spare. <laughs> is he Chinese? And he's like <laughs> Chinese with the, with the with the eyes, all that stuff. Like like he could he fucking loved it. He fucking loved it. I wonder what they told him for his character. Like, you're the dumbest American you ever fucking met. He's like, done. Done. So she goes, Rex is... I, I don't know. I, 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 don't get, I don't get this, really. I don't know what you're getting at. And, like, she just starts cleaning up and moving around. Dottie is watching, like, her bedroom door is cracked, and she's watching. Oh, I miss that. Yeah. And Matthew McConaughey asks Sharla... He's like, how'd you know about the deal I made with this family? And she goes, Jack Danny Rayburn told me. He goes, yeah, but why did he tell you? And Jack Danny Rayburn goes, well, he is my wife. Or she is my wife. (laughs) And he says, I wasn't addressing you, sir. He says that to Jack Danny Rayburn. Jack Danny Rayburn goes, all right, then. Yeah. He he is just (laughs) such a simp, like such a little He's like, like, he's like, like, you know what? He's not wrong. He wasn't addressing me. He was talking to her. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 I will stay in my place. (laughs) Matthew Miana asks again. He goes, why did you know? She's like, Because I'm his wife. And he goes, would you have gotten a cut? And she says, yeah. Yeah, I would have gotten a cut. He's like, well, how much? He's like, well, did you advise uh, Jack Danny Rayburn against doing this? Like, did you advise him not to do this? And she goes, no. He goes, why not? Why didn't you, you know, you could have sold him that Johnny True Love would have fucked it up. She's like, it's not my business. And then she goes to walk away and he grabs her. And he's like, if you're getting a cut, it is your business. Which is not wrong. Yeah, and he and he asks her, and he's like, it he's is, like, you are getting a cut, right? And he's like, I'm, 
what were you going to get? Were you just going to get part of his or were you going to get your own cut? She's like, I, don't know, I assume I would have gotten a fourth. And he goes, all right, so it is your business. And then he's like, how much? So you would have you would have cut the equal shares after my twenty five thousand. So how much would you have gotten? And she's like, I don't I don't know. I didn't do the math. And he's like, why don't we sit down and do the math right now? And like, so takes his seat out, puts her in, like, kind of tucks her into the table, like a little forcibly, and like sits down. And and, and you can tell he's like loving this. Yeah. And he's he's working out the math with her, and he's like, right, minus my twenty five. Like, she's kind of like getting upset, and she's like, I don't know. So it's it's a hundred, and then minus your twenty five, and, and we split the rest. And he goes, it's a hundred? She's like, or fifty? Well, I don't know. Whatever it is. How much is it? And Jack Danny Rayburn goes, it's fifty, right? And she's like, 150, whatever it is. Like, yeah, but you said 100. Huh. Hmm. And Jack Danny Rayburn's like, she was mistaken. It was 50, isn't it? And Matthew McConaughey walks over to their TV, picks it up, and smashes it. And, like, almost like slow motion. Like, he picks it up, puts it over his head, and then smashes it. Smashes it, and then calmly says, no. (laughs) And Johnny Rayburn is like, oh. no, 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 no. Danny uh, Rayburn, da- Jack, Danny. Danny Rayburn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Danny was like, oh, that's my fucking TV. Like, it's just oh, crazy. Oh, come how, on, man. How slow he is. Matthew McConaughey <laughs> says, in the case of accidental deaths, the insurance money doubles. And then Charlotte immediately gets super defensive. She's like, yeah, yeah, the the insurance guy told us that today. Right, right, right honey. Right. And Jack Danny Rayburn goes, uh-uh. And she's like, no, no, he did. He did. I'm sure he did. He's like, nah. And then Matthew McConaughey goes, Jack Danny Rayburn? Did he? And he goes, nah. So it's not 50. Matthew McConaughey says, no, it's 100. (laughs) Just sowing the seeds. And he, he does a great job acting out Danny Rayburn. Rayburn? How do you say his last name? Danny Rayburn. Rayburn. Jacked Danny Rayburn. Jack Danny Rayburn? Yeah. Oh. He's not He's not regular Danny Rayburn. That's a different person. Yeah, okay. okay. This guy is a jacked version of that actor. That's right. Yeah. Jacked Danny Rayburn. You could tell, bro, like good acting. You could tell he's literally connecting dots as this is happening. Oh, my God. This guy is pretty good. <laughs> Charla gets in Matthew McConaughey's face and is like, what are you getting at, huh? What the fuck are you getting at? I made a mistake. And he says, oh, yes, you did. Matthew McConaughey says, you said that you never cared for Johnny True Love, that Rex is an idiot, and that the check was for 100 Matthew McConaughey then pulls out the naked pictures that she was looking at earlier, and she's like, oh, fuck. And oh, he, he opens shit. it, and he's like, whose dick is this? I don't think it's Jack Danny Rayburn's dick. And she's like, no, it is, baby. You were drunk. And he goes over, and he's showing them. He's like, is this your dick? He's like, now, now look, no. now look closely, because you know, may, maybe you were drunk. No, it's it's not my dick. And he goes, no, it's not his <laughs> dick. It's your boyfriend, Rex, the idiot, the one who's getting all the money. He then asked Jack Danny Rayburn. He goes, now were you were you aware that her and Rex were seeing each other? And he says. I'm never aware, man. <laughs> so defeated. Dude, like, drinks Vaseline and turns to the left. It's not Vaseline, you fuck. How do you... Vagisil. Vagisil. Vaseline, it's car shit, bro. No, Vaseline is fucking lotion that we can go get. Vagisil Sales. is, is yeah. vagina cream. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. saying. How do you get it wrong all the time, though? I, was thinking... I correct you every time. Every single time you make that reference. Because, David, I have dyslexia. I flip shit very easily, okay? It's a medical condition. <laughs> yeah, well, go see a doctor. Get some pills. Get some get some Vagisil? Get some Vagisil. <laughs> Take your Vagisil. You are my light, my muse. David, I'm going to turn to the left. There we go. Yep. South Park. Um, and now he's, uh, he's, he's connected the dots. And she's like, I had no idea about the insurance, all that stuff. And she calls Matthew McConaughey a son of a bitch. He then... Grabbing her and he says, Now there's no... There's no need for name calling. 
I haven't called you any names. I'm a guest here, and you need to be polite. <laughs> She's like, Joking, so calmly. No, I never called you any names. Why would you go to name calling? I am your guest. You need to be polite. Just like that. Jesus. And he then makes her say that it's Rex. Rex. And she's asking Jack Danny Rayburn, just like, help me, please. And he goes, nah, I don't, I don't think he's too inclined to help you right now. In fact, I think he's just fine standing over there. And Jack Danny Rayburn says, yes, sir. Yes, sir, bro. And Matthew McConaughey says, that's what I thought. Dude, fucking wild. She then calls him a motherfucker. And he says... That. What did I tell yeah, you yeah. about name calling? And throws her on the ground. And she says she'll get him the money. And he says, well, that's impossible. And he pulls out a cashier's check made out in Rex's name for $100,000. And says Rex wasn't available for comment. And Sharla starts to be like, well, what are you? Why, why didn't you get him to cash it? Or you, you, I, I can get him to cash it for you. And all that stuff. And as she's saying this, Matthew McConaughey punches her in the fucking face. So, like, immediate, her nose is shattered and she is bleeding so much. And immediately ends up with two huge like, black eyes. Like, just, just fucks her up with that. Yeah. And he says, looks like you need a new boyfriend. I'll be your boyfriend. Just, this is where it, bro. Just, just for a little while. This is where it becomes the greatest scene in the history of movies. She's bleeding so much, and this is what I asked Braden to do. He then grabs the chicken leg from earlier, holds it in front of his dick, and says, Look at me. Suck this. She spits blood on the ground and says, Go fuck yourself. Matthew McConaughey goes over, grabs her by the throat. She's like, ah! she's like cowering. Yeah. Grabs her by the throat and says, Dude. if you insult me one more time, I will cut off your face and wear it as my face, which is crazy. So he yeah. stands up and she goes, Jack Denny Rayburn, please. And he says, you made your bed. <laughs> and Matthew McConaughey says, now lie in it. Now. Suck it. He's holding holding the chicken wing in front of his cock. Suck it. She is reluctant and he says, Do you want me to wear your face? And then she she gets up real real like she's so scared. She's getting close. She goes, Now suck it. And she starts sucking it. And he goes, Oh yeah. Here we go. Yeah. He looks at Jack Danny Rayburn and goes, hey, what do you think? Jack Danny Rayburn throws up and says, I don't. I don't think. He goes, all right. Now listen closely, both of you. I performed a service for this family. And I deserve my payment in full. Now because of a misunderstanding with the insurance... I won't receive any cash from my services. That is unfair. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude. He's like, now grab, now, now grab my ass. Grab it with both hands. Yeah. Grab my ass. Yeah, there we go. Dude. That is unfair. I don't want to hear any excuses or placement of the blame. I hold you all equally responsible. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. I was fortunate, however, oh in thinking ahead, and I secured a retainer for my services. Since my cash is not forthcoming, my retainer is now mine. It belongs to me, and I will be taking it with me when I leave. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Whew. You are very good at this. Please moan for me. And then she's like, oh. She starts moaning while she's sucking on the chicken leg. And he's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, Johnny True Love doesn't agree 
with the concept of a retainer. He will be coming here tonight to attempt to take my retainer with him. I can't allow him to do that. Oh, yeah. This family cannot allow him to do that. Oh, oh, oh. It then cuts from that (laughs) to Dottie in her in her bedroom. Telling guys, like, make no mistake, we see it's a shot, it's oh him, God. it's her fucking deep throat in the chicken leg, it's Jack Danny Rayburn just uncomfortable in the corner. They're showing all of this while he's talking. And we then cut to Dottie in her room telling her dolls that she has to leave because she feels suffocated here. Oh my God. This Matthew is like McConaughey fucking- then throws Sharla. Like over in the corner. Yeah, the kitchen. Flips the table over. And then he starts Brain's doing it. He moves like the my precious like the my precious like the my precious guy in Lord of the Rings. My He's precious. moving exactly like that toward them. And says <laughs> So fuck. Now if this family allows Johnny True Love to leave this trailer with my retainer, I will slaughter all of you. I will slaughter you all like your fucking pigs. Now I'm asking for your help. Will you help me? Just like that. And Charlotte goes, Uh huh. And, and uh, Jack Danny Rayburn goes, Yes, sir. Yes, good. Good. And he brushes Charlotte's hair back and goes, Now you are a very beautiful woman. Don't you think so, Jack Danny Rayburn? Uh, he, I, I don't think so. No, he or he's say, like, no. I haven't given it much thought. thought yeah, and yeah. he goes, Punches the wall and goes, No! Wrong answer! And he's like, um, Yeah, yeah, she's, she's very beautiful. He's like, Yes. Yeah, that's so sweet. And he's like, that's, that's so sweet, don't you think, Sharla? <laughs> and she's like, uh huh. And he goes, now, why don't you tidy up the kitchen? And then we'll all sit down to have supper. Just the four of us. Do you understand? And she's like, yeah, I understand. He's like, he's like, look, look at me, look at me. Just the family. And she's like, I understand. And she starts tidying up the kitchen. He, like my face has been appalled for like 40 minutes now. He goes into the fridge, gets two beers out, opens one and puts it in front of Jack Danny Rayburn, opens the other one. He starts drinking it. He lights a cigarette and he goes, so how you doing, big guy? <laughs> and Jack Danny Rayburn is like, where'd you, where'd you get them pics, man? He goes, oh, that's, now that's not very important at this juncture now, is it? <laughs> He's yeah. like, you know, all all she did was, you know, suck his cock and steal all of your money. You know, it could have been worse. And, and Jack like, how? How could, how could it have been worse? And he goes, well, no, you're right. That's, yeah. that's about as bad as it gets. <laughs> and he goes, but hey, listen, why don't you go over there and spend some time with your wife? Okay. All right, champ. I am so uncomfortable watching this movie. It is so fucking crazy. He then goes over. He goes, Charla, are you all right? And she goes, yes, Jack Danny Rayburn, I'm fine. She goes, are are you sure? And she says, yes, Jack Danny Rayburn, I'm fine. Like she is completely traumatized now and yeah, just different person. Johnny, good acting on so, so, guy, that that was the scene. I wanted Braden to suck on a chicken leg I'm as like, I I'm held sorry, it in front I... of my crotch, and he he refused. You know, right. fucking right. fucking right. prude over here won't deep throat a chicken leg and grab my ass while he does it. You know, 
So let me. I gotta say some fucked up conspiracy. Hoff would have done. Ha- I should have done this with Hoff. Hoff <laughs> <laughs> you know what's great is like. I knew you weren't going to do it, but there was so much better of a chance of you doing it. Than <laughs> I knew you wouldn't, but there's there's like a, a it point so much better. There's a point five percent chance of you being like, like you know, man, it'd, it'd be great for the show. Let's do it. There's a zero percent chance that Hoff yeah, would even Hoff consider. Would, yeah. Hoff wouldn't. I think with you, I could have said you play McConaughey, I'll play, I'll play Sharla. I think there's a chance you would have done McConaughey. Yeah, there's a chance I would have done McConaughey. There's no scenario Hoff would have done McConaughey. There's no chance. Yeah, yeah. Hoff would have watched this movie and been like, hey, man, I don't want to do this movie. Can we, uh, can, yeah. we, can, we <laughs> can we just do something else? They'll understand. He wouldn't say a fucking word this whole time. <laughs> yeah, I'm not commenting. Um, but this conspiracy, this is a fucked up story. So there's this big conspiracy uh, about... Hollywood and celebrities and the way that they kind of like uh, drink fucking baby blood and for to help with their age. Like apparently it helps their age. This is a conspiracy. It's not what I'm saying. This is a story I've read. It is what you're saying. Yeah, this is totally what I'm saying. So uh, do you believe it? No. To a degree, yes. Do I believe this has happened at some point or another in human history? Yes. Do I believe this is like all of Hollywood doing this? Fuck no. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so. Apparently, the, the, the story was about actually Hillary Clinton, and it was about how Hillary Clinton and her assistant took a like ten year old girl, and Ash. And this is what apparently they all do when the conspiracy is like referring to all of Hollywood, that they strap the victims down, and while they're alive, cut their face off, and then wear it as theirs, and then they dance around them doing some weird fucking witchcraft bullshit, and then. So what the whole point of that, though, is to scare the victim even more. Seeing that her, their face is cut off on this person while they're still alive apparently raises their adrenal gland to, like, be out of the fucking roof so that when they take their adrenal gland out and take the adrenal chrome, which you've heard, and then they, like, drink that blood. So this specific type of blood that has a way more amounts of, like, adrenaline within it. I don't know what the fuck that does or anything. But that's the conspiracy. So to hear Matthew McConaughey multiple times talking about, I'm going to wear your fucking face. Dude, 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 dude. Like, how fucking pumped would you be if you went to a party at fucking Tom Hanks' house? And then at one point in the night, dude, everyone goes into this room and Tom Hanks cuts off a child's face and puts it on his face and starts dancing around. Dude, best case scenario. Do you know how many people, and I don't know if, you know, obviously, I'm, I know people think Tom Hanks does no, all, no, no, I'm saying, all the Hollywood stuff. Do you know how many people my mother and I have listened to that are apparently going on record, like on video, not suing these people, but going on record on video, going and giving these stories and saying they're victims to specifically what you just said and what, and my story. Why is there faith? Do, do these people not have no, no, faces? No, no, not, not to, well, not as much of, um, to the, the face and the adrenochrome, but more so of like being trafficked and raped and like being a victim and yes. seeing and seeing that saying like, oh, I was at these Hollywood parties where I don't really literally, literally Tom Hanks. Here's, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't believe them. No. Yeah. yeah. I'm not do saying you know, I, do you know why I don't believe them. Why? Someone who is fucking being trafficked and witnesses Tom Hanks doing that to a child does not leave that party alive. That and Tom Hanks is not like, yeah, no, let them go. They're fine. They won't tell anybody. That's always they been- won't. They won't tell anybody that I was wearing a child's face and drinking their blood. He murders anyone who anyone who's going to wear a child's face is not letting survivors go tell people about exactly. it. Exactly. And this is my this has always been my big issue with these conspiracies. Dude, do you really think that there's this big extravagant conspiracy that all these rich, powerful people all around the world, which is true to an extent about sex trafficking, which we've seen with Epstein and shit and the fucking list of the people that they're connected to, but more so just like the fact that you're going to allow all these other people to keep living or all these other like just so many people to know what the conspiracy is that you do do that to the point to where do 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 yeah do 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> where like you're you're going to allow that many variables is my point you're going to allow that many people to know that that many uh, amounts of possibilities of risk to to 
speak out, to have um, evidence, all these things. I'm like, that, 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 that seems very unlikely that they're going to allow all these people to s- – victims, people – And not just victims, but people to also be a part of the conspiracies, part of the secret societies, all this and that. Like, when we listen to these victims, it's like, oh, they go to underground bases where there's just thousands of victims. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He said we as if I've been also seeing these things. I I do not look this stuff up. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. I have not heard any of these victims talk, and I still don't believe them. I didn't mean to say we. Brain like, is tagging reference. me in. Our, <laughs> our search histories are very different. Very mine is Miami Dolphins, Wordle, porn. Yeah. My, That's it. Mine's like <laughs> hippies pissing, <laughs> adrenochrome. <laughs> uh but the, the, there's no way. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's way too many risks, and, and but but the overall conspiracy is that like, oh, there's there's like you know anyone, all these victims anyone under who, anyone who witnesses it and leaves the party alive. They also wore the face and drank the blood. And there is no way, like they just let spectators. Watch, and that's what they watch. Tom Hanks be like, no, oh, right. "I gotta go. Look, I'm wearing your face." <laughs> you're right, though. That's, that's the fucking crazy thing yeah. about it. Is apparently like, th- that's what these victims say. Like they'll be at a party, and it's like everyone there is just famous, powerful people. And then they would take into a back room where there'll be like ten people, and they'll all be like partaking into this, and like she'll have to partake in sexual acts as they're like ripping people's fucking face off yeah. and drinking blood thinking, and shit. I don't believe they're just they're like making this one person that's, that's at what the party. I'm saying. This person that's just happens to be at a party and they're like, hey, come come on in. Oh, and you're, you're gonna live, this. you're gonna be able yeah. to live a life yeah. after this. It's and... not it's not Jennifer Aniston doing these interviews. Oh that's that's they these vic the and it's not just one person. It's like multiple victims that you're like they say every name in the book and that's, that's what pisses, but, that's but, what pisses but, me but, off. But exactly. what I'm saying is it's not Jennifer Aniston Doing these interviews, being like, it's fucking crazy. I was at Tom Hanks' party. It's this person who would never go to Tom Hanks' party. Well, me and my mom were, like, arguing about it. I'm Quit like, bringing your fucking mom up. Well, it's funny because she's, she's like, gung-ho about this show. I'm like, Mom, you think they're going to allow... That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Quit, do, do, quit bringing your mom up and be like, she no, believes yeah, yeah. all this well, stuff. she doesn't believe all of it. I'm just saying we get into... But, she but, is a United States postal worker, Brayden. <laughs> but what's funny is I'm like, you really think they're going to allow um, someone like... Um, not Tom Hanks, fucking... Um, uh, Mission Impossible guy, Tom Cruise. I'm like, you really think you're going to allow someone like Tom Cruise to know the secrets of these societies and be doing this and that, but the moment he gets an inch of love, he's jumping up and down on Oprah's fucking couch screaming about love? Like, come on, bro. I'm like, well, at yeah. the same time, I don't know. He is part of the secret society, which is Scientology. He is, he is part of it. <laughs> which is, yeah. so I guess I'm fucking wrong. Whatever. <laughs> let's get back to this fucking All right, show. let's talk about the movie. <laughs> yeah. Johnny True Love is home. He asks if Dottie and Matthew McConaughey are home. And... uh Jack, Danny Rayburn, and Sharla are like, yeah, they're back in Dottie's bedroom. Johnny True Love then picks the chicken leg up off the ground. Which is funny. Comments on how starving he is. And then, like, you think, oh, he's going to eat that chicken leg. That's great. And then he doesn't. Yeah. I think, well, why not? Yeah. This movie's already weird. Like, have him be like, oh, I'm starving. Just eat that chicken leg. Just eat the Don't fucking- make us think that's going to happen and then have it not happen. Yeah. Give it at least a little. Well, it was funny because there was, like, blood on the chicken wing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking disgusting. Yeah. Was- yeah. Matthew McConaughey and Dottie come out of Dottie's bedroom. Matthew McConaughey puts his arm around Dottie and says, Junior, you're home. Dude, this movie's fucking wild. Matthew McConaughey says he heard he heard about the money, you know. I'm all, I'm all broken up about it, but you know what? That's that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, you know. God damn, that's just the way it is. And Johnny Trevor's like, uh huh. <laughs> and he's like, all right, well, shall we dine? It smells heavenly. And then like everyone's getting at the table. He tells everyone where to sit at the table, which I love. Yeah, everyone sits down. Charla is still covered in blood. It has not been addressed yet by no John, one. By no. Johnny True Love, her face, or, her or face what's just covered name? in blood. Or um, uh, Dottie. Dottie doesn't say. If Dottie knows happened. what happened. Dottie's. Dottie's no, yeah, she yeah. knows what happens, but it's funny because she doesn't like address it. No, yeah. The, Johnny well, True Love is the only one who should. Yeah, and he doesn't. Yeah. And Matthew McConaughey stands over the table and says, ah, "This is lovely. <sighs> who would like to say grace?" And Dottie is. So excited. Yeah. She's like, oh, can I say grace? Can I say grace? And she's like, no, oh, why don't you go ahead? Why don't you go ahead and say grace? I feel fucking traumatized. And me. she says a prayer about like asking asking for a place in heaven for mom and bless this food, God. 
And, you know, we, we hope that we take care of us and we hope that we can have a place in heaven too. In in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, Matthew McConaughey tells Sharla to grab everyone a drink and a plate for Johnny True Love. And he make, starts making Dottie a plate. Dottie is so happy. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, they have such a cute little banter. And he's like, oh, let me let me get that for you. I'm he's like, like, you want white meat and dark meat? She's like, yeah, I want both. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, you want potato salad? She's like, no, no potato and then, salad. But it's funny. He'll ask, um, what's her name? Dottie? No, no, no. Sharla. No. Sharla. Um, he would ask Sharla, like, the same thing. And she'd just be, like, so quick to be like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, she'll go, whatever, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jack Danny Rayburn asks everyone if they want potato salad. Johnny True Love finally says, hey, Charlotte, your mascara's running a little bit. And she goes, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. Because her face, she is, her mascara is running, <laughs> but she's also fucking blood all over her face. Swollen face, black yeah. eyes, blood, like, broken she's nose. so fucked up. Yeah. Um, Matthew McConaughey then, ding, 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 hits his glass and stands up and goes, everyone, I have, a, I have an announcement to make. You know, as, as some of you might have noticed, you know, Dottie and I have been spending an awful lot of time together. And, uh, Dude. you know, we have some very exciting news. I asked Dottie to be my wife, and she said yes. So we're getting married. And and <laughs> Johnny Trulo's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Jack Danny Rayburn goes, well, I mean, allow me, the first, allow me to be the first one to say how happy I am for y'all. And Johnny Trulo goes, shut the fuck up. Dude, it's like, <laughs> like that. That, oh my god, dude! It's Johnny like, True Love says, "So when's all this taking place?" Matthew Connie says, "Well, we're we're leaving right after this delicious meal." He's like, "Is that so?" Yeah, and he says, "You can't have my sister." And they kind of they go back and forth a little bit, and he's like, you "Can't have my sister. She come with me, Dottie. Go pack a bag." And Matthew Connie goes, "Dottie, you stay right there in your seat." And he's like, no, Dottie, go pack a fucking bag. Stay in your seat. Like, they're arguing back and forth. Dottie gets up, and, like, she's in the kitchen, or she's in the living room now. And, and now you like, can see? kind of tell, like, Dottie's being, like, torn. Yeah. You well, know? Of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this like, poor girl. Finally, something's affecting her emotionally. Uh, or she, not emotionally. She's in the like, living room. Matthew McConaughey stands up and yells, Dottie! And then he looks at Johnny True Love and says, she's my retainer. It's like, bro, this, this movie does not let up for a second. Johnny True Love says, well, the deal's off. You're just going to have to eat this one. And then he pulls out the gun and points it at Matthew McConaughey and says, Dottie, go get your stuff. Matthew McConaughey quietly says, Dottie, you stay right there. All right, this this uh, this will be just fine. And they're standing like that, and, like they're back and forth. Sharla then grabs a knife. Stabs Johnny in like in the back, like, and I'm up like near the shoulder. I'm like, oh my god, she's like <laughs> literally, the, she's traumatized to the yeah. point to where she thinks that this is the right move. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he fires the gun, but doesn't. It looks like he might shoot his thumb off. Yeah, it's very. He fire. He misfires trying to get Matthew McConaughey, but doesn't. And he drops the gun. He, he definitely shoots his thumb because he drops the gun after. Oh uh, yeah, okay, okay. And Matthew McConaughey kicks the gun into the living room. Tackles Johnny True Love and then starts fucking him up. They get up. He stands him up against the fridge, grabs a can of yams and starts hitting him in the face with this. Dude, and this is, oh my God, this is the fucking worst part. Sharla is then joining in and Jack Danny Rayburn runs up to the fridge, gets down and grabs Johnny True Love's legs and says, I got his legs. I got his legs, Matthew McConaughey. Kill him. Fucking kill him. And there's blood being splat on his father's face from his son being killed by fucking Matthew McConaughey. Dude, and I'm at this point where I'm like, uh, 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 all the actors and the director was just like, you know what, fuck it. Let's just... <laughs> just chaos. Uh, yeah, out, just out the window, everything. Doesn't matter what happened up to this point. This is what's happening. Dottie then picks up the gun and starts shooting it. And everyone stops. Yeah. And she shoots Johnny True Love in the chest, like, on purpose, like, to kill him. She then shoots her dad in the stomach. And he is just... He goes down. But he's screaming. He's like, ah! Ah! Matthew, ah! It doesn't stop. Do one more. Do one more. Ah! There we go. Ah! 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 That's too much. 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 Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Matthew McConaughey is then calmly. He's like, hey, hey, just put the gum down. Just put the gun down. Everything's going to be fine. And she's, like, just staring at him, holding the gun, telling her to calm down. She takes her finger off the trigger, 
and says, I'm going to have a baby. She then puts her finger back on the trigger. Matthew McConaughey is smiling ear to ear. He's like, a baby? Oh, my God. Like, like he's going to cry. He's so happy. He's like, we're having a baby? And then the screen goes black and the credits roll. William Friedkin, you sick motherfucker. Dude. It, oh, I can't take anything out. Otherwise, it won't be dirty enough. Like, what? You couldn't take anything out of that? For it to not be fucking filthy enough? If you took one thing out of that, it wouldn't be filthy enough? I mean, it wouldn't be. <laughs> All right. He's not wrong. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're it's right. A sick motherfucker. <laughs> You know, you know what movie isn't filthy? Oh man, it's gonna be hard. Oh, dude, the Nutty Professor. The Nutty Professor, dude, like the, it's it's so clean, it's so well done, it's mm-hmm. good for the whole family. It is. Gather the whole family together, sit down, and watch the Nutty Professor. Mm-hmm. You know what movie's probably a little filthy? It's that this the title's just filthy. Um, the movie we're doing next week, Snatch. Ooh. It is a 2000 crime comedy. I've never seen Snatch. People talk about it. They talk about Brad Pitt talking all gibberish and whatever. Uh, so Chuck Dahlia, not his real name, but that's what he goes by on social media, so I'll roll with it. Chuck <laughs> Dahlia. Uh, he lives out in Denver, Colorado. He's a listener of the pod, a friend of one of the co-hosts. This is his suggestion. He's a listener. He went about it the right way, telling right us to do it. Way. We're going to fucking do it, guys. Yeah. Do you want to watch Snatch before we do a podcast on Snatch? You should. You should watch Snatch before we do a podcast on Snatch. Here's where you can <gasps> watch Snatch before we do a podcast on Snatch. Where, David? It's available on Netflix. Brayden's the only person on the planet who doesn't have Netflix. There you go. Watch it on Netflix with your subscription. Let's say you don't have Netflix and you're like, well, I would rather... Pay to rent it off of another streaming service. Then Netflix is like five ninety nine a month. Yeah. Then pay five ninety nine. I'd rather pay two ninety nine or three ninety nine to rent it. Here's where you could do that. It's available on Vudu and Amazon Prime Video for two ninety nine. Nice. It's available on YouTube and Apple TV for three ninety nine. Look at that, man. <sighs> I don't know how to react right I, now. This movie took a lot out of me, guys. I'm like emotional. And, and for you know, the rest we did day. we did Killer Joe because it was my pick. Yeah, we did whatever the fuck we did last week. Jurassic, it was your pick. Park, Jurassic Park three. three because it was your pick. We're doing Snatch next week because Chuck Dahlia went the right way about it. But Brayden, yeah. what is the right way? How do people, if they want us to do their favorite movie, how do they go about telling the Five Six Kings, David? They could just email us at the Five Six Kings at gmail dot com. Do you mean F I V E S I X K I N G S at gmail dot com? Yes. Or or. They could just contact us, or and or they could just go, or it's or or it's or, or, or yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I do or every time. What do you what do you, what are you getting thrown off by that? Just know. roll with it. Okay, so or they could contact us at our Instagram, which is the Five Six Kings. You mean at F I V E S I X K I N G S on Instagram? It's that simple. I mean, it's that simple. Why would you not? Why would you We're not? gonna do snatch because Chuck Dahlia is like, do fucking snatch. You gotta you be- do it. Better fucking do snatch. I- do you want me to wear your face? Oh my god, I don't want you to wear my face. He's like, then you're gonna do snatch. Oof. I performed a service for this family, and my payment is that you do snatch. And I'm like, I'll do- yeah, I'll do snatch. I'll do snatch. Uh, yes, we'll sir. We'll do it. Yeah, that's that's how it happened. Man, that's scary. Yeah. Brayden, so like they they know how to contact us. Yeah, they know where to watch us. They know where to listen. But when. When do new episodes of the Five Six Kings drop weekly? David, every motherfucking Monday. Every motherfucking Monday? Every motherfucking Monday. Labor Day, Memorial Day, Easter Monday, Martin Luther King Day, President's Day. Every motherfucking Monday. Well, guys, you heard it. Every motherfucking Monday, we're yep. here. We're bringing you new episodes of the Five Six Kings. We're talking about your favorite movies. We're talking about our favorite movies. Braden is divulging serious family drama, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Any other way. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. I love you all very much. Peace out. Bitch, I'm from Palm Beach County. That's where I'm from. Where niggas get 